Hello and welcome to the Super Show podcast. Today I am your host Alex Jones and it is with great pleasure that I welcome you in to 2023, the first podcast we're doing in this whole year and I am joined of course by Jamie and Chris. Hello guys, how the hell are you doing? Oh, I've never been better, Josie, thank you for asking. I, I, I've had a shit one mate, but, you, but up till now, because, because you, you've elevated everything, absolutely, I'm next level now, I'm, I'm so good. I'm ready to fly. This Let's is the podcast it. that turns Chris's life around. Ooh, I've just, I've just yeah. been waiting for Chris, this. Chris was aggrieved at the energy that I was bringing to the uh, the podcast. So, hi. We're going to try and keep it there, and we're going to try and bring Chris up rather than slide down to his level. Yes! So this is something we don't want to do. Is that a, is that but, a hype joke already? You're kicking off 2023. Wow, wow. okay. It See, wasn't, people, actually. People can't it, tell, I, you know, we just Yeah, it's already a 180 you know, for me now, and I'm back down in the dumps, so... Great. Let's let's go. I mean, you're Sorry. technically already down in the dumps. You're five there foot we go. one. There we go. Okay, thanks. I'm not five foot one. Look, never stop, ever stop perpetuating. Never ever joke. <laughs> if I say it enough, it will become real. It's the way the internet works. Commenters okay, do look, your jobs. Never ever joke about height, Jamie. We because everyone can be Jeremy Renner at any point, and you could be smaller than Chris. So just <laughs> don't do it. Uh, right? See, Jeremy Renner's technically the same height if he can find his balance on that. I, mean, I know hopping isn't easy. Listen, but uh, technically, a, a, a wise man once said, "We're all the same height lying down." So I'll, I'll take that. So it's not yeah. true. But that's but. not true. <laughs> no, I know it's. I've not seen true. those videos of rolling the barbell to see if you've got enough cake, where it bashes into your ass, and then they're like, "You pass the barbell test." Yeah, so, wow. that's not true. I've got a feeling I might be taller than both of you lying down <laughs> by, by some margin, <laughs> but that's just a hunch. We'll do it. Next time we're all together, we'll lie down and measure ourselves to see how tall we are lying down. I cannot believe that this is how we're starting our first podcast in 2023, but okay. Can I say? I thought Chris would take the opportunity to brag about his three-foot penis, but, you know, he's not. He's lying down. That would add some height. Anyway. You know. Let's move on. And let me quickly say... (laughs) If you're watching us on YouTube right now, you could also be listening to us on a podcasting platform or vice versa because we are the Super Show Pod at Super Show Pod. We are available all across the interwebs. You can get us on podcasting platforms like Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and we are on paisleyradio.com Thursdays at 10 p.m., repeated on Mondays at 10 p.m. So there is no excuse not to check us out in multiple myriad platforms. Um, but hey, however you check us out, I'm just glad you are here. Um, I think, boys, because we've got a bit of a special show today, um, Do we're, we? doing a ca- well, we're doing a bit of a uh, rundown of the games that are supposed to be released 2023. I'm not going to say that will be released, because um, <laughs> as we've learned in the last couple of years, <laughs> anything can change. Let's talk about <laughs> Skull and Bones. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> there's lots of games we could talk Jesus. about. So what I'll do is I'll do a quick run through of the Patreon. and We'll do a quick catch up to see what we've been playing over the Christmas period. And then we will go balls deep into the uh, prospective releases oh. for 2023. Hell yeah. Uh, um, so yes, first of all, I am going to give a shout out, boys, to some absolute legends. I'm talking about our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash super show who support us week on week uh, and keep the lights on. Some of them, boys and girls, have been there for two whole years, which is how long we've been doing this podcast, which is absolutely fucking mental. Um, Wait, no, it's three. It's three. Three, three, three years. <laughs> yeah. Oh my good god, it is three years. Jesus. Yeah. Let's, let's time do the, flies. Let's when do you the time warp again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that genuinely is is insane. I can't believe it's three years. But there we go. <laughs> um, okay, so these patrons that I'm talking about, I'm talking about athletic gravy, brimstone, cold K, crow's perch. Uh, oh god, I always just mess this up. Davnak Coburn, <laughs> Ice Not Rock Salt, Jesper Camden Newson, Leo Merger, Mindful Pig, Mester Anthropic, Pastors Guild. And the big dogs, the members of the board. I'm talking about Brett Z, aka Shellshock, Doppler, Geometric Potter, Hacksaw Book Reed, Manuel Guerrero, and Pease Wad. Wow. Uh, some true gems of human beings. Um, I'm glad you can all. Legends of the yes, Fall, on really? This journey. So, absolutely. there you go. It, it's especially nice when we return to the podcasting fold after you know, the inevitability of Christmas and New Year responsibilities taking over our lives to see so so many of those friendly faces are still kind of cheering us on uh, yeah. from the boardroom and haven't just abandoned us like we often abandoned ourselves. <laughs> Given um, that, yeah, we, it took us a little while to get warmed up again for 2023 and we did have a few messages saying, where are you guys at? So I'm glad, yeah. um, 
I'm glad I, that we can give them what they want. I love Jonesy, though, you still brushed it all off when you started this podcast by welcoming people to 2023 like this isn't coming out in the third week of the year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people haven't been able to start 2023 in earnest until they've heard our voices. If I saw you in March and I hadn't seen you for three months, I'd still go, Happy New Year, if I hadn't seen you. So there you go. Really? Okay, well, that's you, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Happy Easter, fellas. Really. So, um, you know, Weird. it's been a while. Um, I, <laughs> do you know what? Easter eggs, I've already seen them for sale. Insanity. It, it's insane, isn't it? Like, I, I think 2023 hadn't even rolled out before I started seeing Easter eggs at, at supermarkets. It's mm. like, what are you doing? It's mental. Yeah. It's, who's buying? If you buy them now... Are they messed up by Easter? Oh, when is Easter? I don't know when Easter is. It's April sometime, right? April, it's yeah. April. It's around then. April, March. I don't know Three if they'd months. be messed is up. good for yeah. chocolate? It's probably not great for it, but I don't know if they'd be messed up. And the thing is, I can understand it from a certain perspective in that there's something about eating an Easter egg that does feel special. Like, it's just... It, like, I don't know There's whether it's nostalgia or just me being sentimental, but eating Easter egg chocolate feels different to eating chocolate. But I'm also aware that if I took advantage of that by starting to do it in January, it would lose all luster yeah. by the time the actual date yeah, rolls it's around. only special because so, it only uh, comes yeah. around, like, during a specific exactly. time. Exactly. Like, what, what, you know, what's next, fellas? It's like, it's like doing anal on Valentine's Day. It's like oh, okay. if your wife wow. or your mm. girlfriend started to let you do it every month or every week, then, you know, where would, like Valentine's Days and birthdays wouldn't be special in the same way anymore because you'd be getting <laughs> anal all year round. A-A-Y-R. <laughs> A-A-Y-R. <laughs> As a married man, I can tell you, uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy with the birthday hand job. Uh, <laughs> It's so, you, so Josie, just just to clarify, you are not getting uh, a a y r. I've unfortunately not. <laughs> That's like I've, you know you know when people get like crazy degrees and become doctors and stuff like that, they put their name like Alex Jones a a y r. Anal all year round, no, baby. I think I think Jonesy's getting a L W H J. A limp wristed hand job. So. You need the enthusiasm. You need the enthusiasm. Anyone watching who, who are you getting close? You know, if you're going to do it, you get you getting close. If you're going to do it. Enthusiasm is important. Soon, yeah. anyway. Now, uh, please. Well, the one, the, one of the ones where she's not even looking at it. She's looking. At, she's on her phone and doing it with the other hand. <laughs> and just, just say when. <laughs> say I, when. I feel like. What? I feel like whilst that is like horrendous for most people, I feel like that's a kink for some. <laughs> like, don't look at me, be on your phone and just oh, do it. Oh, absolutely. yeah, totally. That's what I'm into. 100%. Like, what what do they call be. them? Like bank pigs or some shit. I'm sure that's like similar kind of vein, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, you're going to have to introduce pig? us to that one, Chris. The, no, bank the bank pigs. pigs. Isn't, isn't it like the, the, the people that want to be like financially dominated? And they're called oh, bank pigs or something. There's a name oh, for it. Fin, fin, fin dom, fin fin dom financial domination. Yeah, but I think I think like bank pig. Pig. I like bank pig. Yeah. Oh, I'm a bank pig. Let me, let me give you money and get absolutely oh, zero in return. Fin- I'll tell you what. If someone was to be my fucking bank pig, you know, I'll, I'll talk dirty to you. Who's the pig? Mm. Who's I the pig? Is the pig the person doing it or the person who's getting it done? The pig to? is the payee. Bank. The pig. Okay, so if okay. you had a bank pig, they're paying you. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm confusing myself. Because they're, they're right. the little piggy. Because if you were the dominating one, you wouldn't be wouldn't want to be referred to as the pig. Yeah, yeah, you're not the pig. I mean, yes, yeah, what yeah, I thought. Exactly. You, you're not Bank the bottom, pig is infinitely the better than, than... You know, you're, you're the top No, bitch. exactly. Yeah. You're, you're, the, you're the feeder, you know? You're like you're Ooh. like the mother bird. Oh, wait, no, you're not the feeder. You're oh, getting fed. Oh, no. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. You know, I didn't mean to sort of, yeah, open up that kettle of fish. It's going a little bit off the rails, fellas. Hey, uh, on, on Fendom sounds topic, like though. a character that would get added to multiverses, and I wouldn't know what show they were from. <laughs> on, on a similar topic, though, have you guys noticed? So, you know, on, on, on Twitter, when you go to, like, your, like, explore tab, okay, and, like, the, the for you and all the topics and whatever, and you can pin specific mm, topics yeah. and, and look at stuff. So I've got PS5 pinned as a topic. I don't know if you guys have noticed this trend. I'm going to show you now. Um, on PS5 as a topic, and of course now it's not coming up, right? It uh, <laughs> top is bank pig. No, uh, in in all of the things, it's uh, pictures of scantily clad women or like half naked women or sometimes topless women, and it just says me or the PS5. But because they put PS5 in there, it's being picked up algorithmically. And that's all I'm being served on when I go to my PS5 um, mm, like smart. topic, and it's just, it's the most bizarre, weirdest fucking thing. And at some point, fellas, I, I, I'm gonna have to tell you, I'm I'm not a man of conviction. At some point, it's not gonna be the PS5. And then what do I do? What do I do? Yeah, yeah that is a tricky one. 
I see on Twitter, I've, I saw loads one, um, like multiple times of people, po- yeah, women posting scantily clad pictures of themselves. And it just said, do you like my Pokemon anime? And I was oh. like, what? I don't get when I was like, oh, it's the it's an algorithm okay. thing. Okay, hold on. They're Can, hitting the so, top trending ta- keywords. So hold on. So I've searched PS5. Okay, so the very first yeah. one is yeah. Amaranth that says me or the PS5. It's a little bit like glary. Sorry. Right. Uh, gotcha. Okay, no, actual thing. Good fine. Enough. Fine. Look there, another me or the PS5. Uh, Forspoken. Oh. There's going to be- Hang on. Know. Let's make sure, like, I don't know- Jones is editing this podcast. Make sure he doesn't have any mosaicing to do, please. No, mate, it's all right. It's fine. Like, even if it's, even I, if it's I there. I will say- Even if it's there. But this is this is this is quite an easy question for me there to answer. Like, Marcy Chan, I, I Marcy Chan, face face. her or the PS Five? Like, huh? But it's, it's easy. This is an easy thing. If I was because the way I think about it is, if I was to bring home one of them or a PS Five, which one am I going to get in trouble for? It's not the PS Five. So uh, I'm I'm mm. going PS Five in all. Of them. Oh, my wife just messaged me saying PS Five. Yeah. So <laughs> yes, yes, dear PS Five. I think I, I think I'm being a bit loud. Um, no, but it, it is just decision kind of, made. It is just kind of weird though that like, uh, like this is the thing, and that is like surely people are taking advantage of something like that, but then just filter it out. I just I just don't get what's going on on Twitter these days. Yeah, if I'm honest. I had I saw a funny one of them today, and funny because it's so easy to answer. But oh, I don't know if I want to share it. Otherwise, if it's if it's a little bit too edgy. Um, because it's not even a question. Uh, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I'll tell you guys after the recording. <laughs> okay. You'll, but that's one that you can put in the Discord for the patron. See? Oh, there you go. Yes. See? There you 2023 go. 2023 synergy. It. I'm linking everything back together. But yeah. in, all, in all seriousness, Twitter has been guff for me. For Just inside the last week, I don't know if something changed or if I changed something, but mm. I've been getting loads of these. It's like a little star symbol, and it says, you might like. And previously, that. like Chris said, yeah, everything before used to be things I'd actually shown an interest in. So my timeline would be inundated with video games and football, but now it's like just random. And it's usually, I don't know, again, it sounds like I'm trying to make conspiracy theories, but like really hard or really, really hard left or right leaning stuff and nothing in between. Yeah. Um, and I don't remember ever like signing up for any of that, but maybe, maybe I accidentally clicked something or maybe I spend more time reading nah, stuff nah. that pisses me off. And so that's what it, I don't know. It, it's the same with me. Something's definitely been tweaked. Um, but hey, whatever, yeah. you know. Is, 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 it's, is yeah. that the one, I'm pretty sure I've had that where it gives you an alert as well. It, it gives you a little like number one alert thing and you click saying, someone's added me and then you click on it and it's like, you might like this. I'm like, no, I don't like Yeah, that. yeah. yeah. it's got gonna, nothing uh, nothing to do with me. Announced to me. That's annoying as fuck. Anyway, all right, Chris. So so you've had that little fun on Twitter with your <laughs> PS5 notifications. Lots of fun, mate. What the hell else have you been doing since the last time we chatted? Oh, fellas, it, it, it's been a long journey. Okay, um, and I, I didn't make it easy on myself, all right, especially over the Christmas period where I was kind of going crazy. I probably ate my weight in cheese, uh, no regrets, um, you know, because <laughs> nice. that, that's what December's for. Crackers or no crackers? Nah, no, pff, crackers, please, fuck crackers. Just just a, just a chunk of cheese and a knife and you just, and just eat. You know, oh, that's virgin oh. cheese. Oh, so, so fucking good. Anyway, um, yeah, obviously we've got lots to catch up on, right? Like we've got like, uh, what, four... Four weeks to catch up on. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll keep mine kind of brief, um, but I did finish God of War uh, eventually. Way! <laughs> Yay! It's mad. Like, I know you guys are saying, oh, yeah, you know, I finished it at about like the 35 hour mark, etc. I think I rolled credits at about the 46 hour mark. Um, Blow me. Yeah, to be fair though, before I finished the game, I did pretty much all of the berserkers. So I, I was like taking my time. And and that's why I yeah. say, like, I did it to myself. I finished it, like, in the first week of Jan when actually I could have finished it in December if I didn't do the Berserker stuff. Um, I want to okay. ask a question, but I'm ca- I want to be careful. Mm. Yeah, well, this, this is... Should I not? So I, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just gonna put some, like, top-level thoughts out there, okay? They are spoiler-free, so don't worry. Uh, but I will say, now that we've all finished <laughs> it, maybe it's time to record a, uh, a spoiler cast. Uh, yes. Yeah. For the patrons. Uh-oh. Uh, mm. Got to start kick off twenty twenty three a fresh, funky, and happening. But um, I did I did enjoy it overall. Um, I do still very much think uh, that twenty eighteen was the better, more succinct um, experience. There were some- something I love about if, if you said to someone how was the date last night and they went mm, I enjoyed it overall. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, let me share some top level thoughts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> On the whole. Uh, it felt pretty good. No, uh, 
no, it was good. And, I, and I'm, I'm glad that it exists and I'm glad for what it is. And I'm glad it kind of like wrapped up that story of, you know, the kind of like Norse mythology um, and very intrigued to see where it goes next um, and what it kind of gets up to. But I don't, it just, especially towards the end, just felt a little bit, fell a bit flat for me. Some cool fights and stuff, mm. don't get me wrong, like as you'd expect. But yeah, it, it's difficult to kind of get into the weeds of it, isn't it? Because you don't want to get too... Without getting into yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I understand. Exactly. And I, I think like the more I kind of like get into it, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm concerned. But still definitely like one of the best um, combat systems going. Absolutely fucking adore it. It's amazing. Um, whoever they hired for their um, user interface and user experience needs to be fired. Because fuck them and their fucking menus. <laughs> Absolute fucking dog shit. What were they thinking? Like, it wasn't broken in 2018. Why fix it now? Like, like it's mental. Anyway. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. And, and I, I'm, I'm relishing chatting to you guys about it because, uh, you know, I've got, I've got some thoughts. Not all of them positive, but positive overall? Fair to say? Okay. Yeah. I know Jamie's, okay. Jamie's yeah. already thinking about how he's going to murder me in my sleep. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. I think there's, there's a lot of room for... Differing opinions that exist on a very similar plane, if that makes sense. Yeah, right. Like, right. I think we'll agree on a lot, we'll just uh, differ on how much it bothered us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's that's just like part of the course, right? Um, yeah. Then, yeah, if I just think of like, that's my gaming thing that I want to talk about, then like, film-wise, I saw Avatar for my sins. Nice. I, I just kind of Did thought, you have to do a Wii? Uh, I didn't, actually. Uh, I, I've got a fairly good, good constitution work. when it comes to bladder control. Um, oh, I would have done three by the time that film rod credits. <laughs> See, what you need to do is you need to get prostate cancer, my friend. And uh, that's what you are. Mm, <laughs> strong. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'd, I'd support you through it, Jonesy. I also think you look great bald. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, but yeah, like, it's one of those things where I was never, like, that into Avatar. Uh, the the first one was just like yeah me me either yeah, yeah. it was this, supposed to be this big cultural moment and it must I I saw it and I thought it was cool but yeah I must admit it kind of didn't ever feel that amazing to me yeah it, it, like it, but, you know. it it was a film that came out of the theater thinking yeah that was cool and I had no uh, I was not compelled to go watch it again like I know a lot of my friends were like we oh, gotta we gotta go watch it again oh my god like as soon as it's the cinema like well, cool the fuck down like you know. Let, pump the brakes a bit, you know, let it, let it cool off, mm. let it simmer, let it settle and then decide. But yeah, like I, I some of my friends have seen it like, I don't know, five times in the theater, blah, 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 whatever. That um, is crazy, wow. man. And, and then I'm thinking of like the, the fucking sad acts that got like fucking the Avatar people tattooed on their backs. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck is going on here? That, that's um, how this film grows so much money. It's just like these hidden people who secretly watch it eight times and have entire back tattoos that they hide from their closest <laughs> relatives and loved ones that are just full on murals to Pandora and the, yeah. and the Navi. It, it's fucking, I don't, it's not that though. It's like, it's not that important. Like I don't understand. No, it's not. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah. It's, it's, not so weird. It, it's, it's not like a cultural yeah. touchstone or anything like that. I just really don't understand it. And, and something dawned on me, fellas, when I was watching this new Avatar film. So, it's a little bit of a preamble. So I went to go watch it because I was like, I'm not necessarily interested in continuing watching that story. Like, I don't give a shit about it. But it's always been this thing of like, I'm I'm big into cinema and films, obviously. I mean, we're all editors here, so I think we can all vouch for the same kind of thing. But it was very much a case of like, listen, if this is the the kind of like the next thing that cinema has going for it in terms of like development and, and spectacle, et cetera. Like I want to see it and I want to see it in the best screen possible. So I went to go watch it in the IMAX. Okay. IMAX 3D, blah, blah, blah. Um, and don't get me wrong. The 3D was cool, but it wasn't like mind blowing. The high frame rate, I like, I think we're so used to playing games at 60 FPS. Like it doesn't even fucking register. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't actually yeah. register to me other than, oh yeah, it's smooth. Like, you know, it, it makes no difference to me. Um, the story wise it makes a difference when you can switch from one to the other, but I, I think if you because you're not sitting in the IMAX switching from sixty to thirty, it's like yeah, just no. But I think they do though. Well, I think they're meant to, um, but I didn't notice any of that shit anyway. Um, the three D was fine. I, again, it didn't add anything to it. I, I was like, oh my god, thank god I'm watching this in three D. You know, um, the story is just like pants as they usually are. Um, 
it's a long film, fellas. It's like three hours and an hour and a half. And I was like, oh my God, I, I'm only at the halfway point. But I will say that from that point onwards to the end of the film, it, like, it flew by. And that was probably the most enjoyable chunk of the film, which is not a good look when you say, oh no, no, no it, it gets better halfway through an hour and a half into the movie. Um, but something that- yeah, Just hang on for that first yeah, hour and a half. Yeah. And That's like the RPG it. that you need to play 30 hours of to enjoy. Like, yeah, exactly. No. But, so, but, <laughs> but something occurred to me when I was watching it, all right? And I was like, I, I was trying to, in, as I'm watching the spectacle unfold and whatever, and I'm trying to understand why people go fucking crazy for this. And they're like, oh, this world and this, that, that, that. And it occurred to me that like the people that are, are geared to all of this, like they've maybe never played a modern game in their life. Like I'm looking at all these vistas and all these like ideas, you know, so-called ideas that James Cameron has. And I'm like, it's cool, but I, I fucking, I've seen all of this before. Like nothing you are showing me is new. In fact, there was even one shot that I was like, that's lifted fucking straight from Anthem, you know? And I'm just thinking, if, wow. you, if you aren't exposed to that and you aren't like, oh my God, look at these vistas and look, you, you know, and you don't, you've never experienced that before. You're like, wow, look, they're fucking floating islands and these fucking dragon birds and all of that's fucking cool. And I'm going to come watch this again. But for me, it was like, yeah, right. I've, I've played 50 fucking games that look exactly like this. And I wouldn't say that the graphics were like massively impressive. Like they were good, sure. And mm. I guess that's all they have to be is they just need to be good that you don't notice that they're actually like bad CG, right? Um, but there was some some interesting stuff like towards the end where you, you kind of get that James Cameron flair where it's like the robotics and the giant machines and, and kind of, almost talking back to Aliens 2 uh, or Aliens, um, that kind of like starts to get together and brings it together. And, mm, and okay. by the end of the film is, is very enjoyable, that like last set piece. When I say the last set piece, it's probably like the last hour of the film is one entire fucking set piece. And maybe that's why it's pretty cool. But I shit you not, there was one, I, I don't care if this is a spoiler for someone. It's a minor spoiler, so don't worry. But at one point there's a fucking, a whale talks and I'm like, Where, what are we doing? A whale is talking. This guy's communicating with a whale. <laughs> And not even like through like the little fucking ponytail connecting it, like pin touching tips. Like the, the, the whale was just like telepathically talking to this dude. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, it's fucking talking whales now. Um, I love, I can imagine you sitting in the cinema and it happens and you go, okay, fine. <laughs> just like, yeah, exactly. At, at that point, it's like, it's, it's not even that you have to suspend your disbelief. It's just that it, it, it's almost like the disbelief you have enters, enters a singularity and you're just like, yeah, be sure. <laughs> It's, it's, you just accept anything at that point. Yeah, yeah all right. Mm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that now. Knowing what's been like the difference between Avatar to this Avatar, I don't need to see the rest of the Avatars in the cinema. I can fucking wait for them on on TV. Like I don't give a shit. Like that's that's my takeaway. Oh, they're slipping into straight to DVD territory. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, buddy. Well, um, not yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, but like, I mean, there's obviously other things like TV shows, et cetera, but like, those are the headlines. Otherwise, we're going to be here forever, right? And I see, Jonesy, um, you've got a, a film cool. out there that I, I can kind of contribute to as well, I think. But yeah. Yeah, I watched that as well. Yeah. Um, so, Jamie. Yeah. Um, I imagine your list of things you've done, seen, played, whatever it is, long. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's, but let's go on the highlights. Long. Uh, yeah, I can't really remember where I left off um, last year in terms of talking about what I was playing. So I thought I'd just like really quickly say that I think the Gotham Knights is uh, really bad. Um, and it's like I went back and re-listened to the podcast where Jersey defended it. And I wish I'd played it at that point because you were bending over backwards to say things that I completely disagree with you about that game. Like it's a legit one of the worst games I played last year. Um, uh, Cult of the wow. Lamb was... Uh, uh, yeah, it's it. Yeah, another for another day. Call of the Lamb was uh, really good. Um, I it, like it, that. If I played that slightly earlier, it might have actually crept onto a top ten list. Um, Sonic Frontiers is a weird and like beguiling <laughs> video game that I don't particularly like, but like I can like it's an interesting direction for that franchise, and I can see why people who care about Sonic played it and were like. If this is an indication of where they're going to start going in the future, it gives them cause to be excited. But in yeah. its own right, it's just not for me at all. Need to speak- those, let me let me just because I, I was going to touch on Sonic Frontiers as well because I mm. in, one thing I found interesting about I played a bit of Sonic Frontiers is I when you look at those trailers and you're like, what the hell are they thinking? Yeah. After having played it, I'm like, oh okay. Yeah, this you go. Oh, that's makes what they were much thinking. More yeah. Sense. Yeah. Like yeah. it's not as in, it's not as weird. But that doesn't like, mean it's good. Messy. <laughs> 
it doesn't mean it's good. It means that some of the things that seemed like they were going to be the worst, the most egregious thing, like acts of insanity, just kind of make more sense. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. I get it. Okay, but, but it, Jane- it, it is it is still insane. Like yeah. it like like the, the idea, the, the story and the structure to this game is non-existent to the point where at one point I was just went around getting a load of collectibles, thinking I was doing side stuff, and didn't realize that I was actually progressing the main story because all the main story consists of is collecting the side stuff. And so my main objective, like to progress the story, f- like five or six times in the row, was to go and talk to a hologram of Amy. I'd go and talk yeah. to a hologram of Amy, and my next objective would be talk to Amy, and she would be over here, talk to Amy over here. <laughs> there was meant to be stuff in between all that sh- shit, but that was the stuff I was already doing because it's an open world game, and you go and do stuff in open world games, yeah, and you realize that stuff to talk to her. But if you've already collected it, then you could just talk to her. So yeah, yeah, uh, j- j- utterly like an, a dumbfounding experience at times, um, <laughs> and a frustrating one at times, um, and not a good one. Uh, See, I actually, I've enjoyed more of the combat than I thought I would. I, I, it's like definitely breaks up the monotony of like the world. <laughs> insofar as I usually find Sonic to be, there's no combat. Do you know what I mean? There's you still just no combat. Jump. You press square and he bounces into a thing over and over again. No, no, you know exactly. But what I'm saying is like, for example, the big, the squid things and whatever flying around the world and that they've tried to add some variation into the, just hit square repeatedly and they've got some, They've got oh, things that you don't so have like to jump there, on there the are, head off. So there are, oh, there are one where you have to press square repeatedly and then know when to stop before they laser you. And there's one yeah. where you press square and then you run away from it so it doesn't blow up. And then there's ones that you one need to run a ring around them before you... Shoot. Yeah, you, or before but, you but press square. To, oh, and then there's to, like, one where you need to run head. up the side of it to its head and then press square repeatedly. And there's <laughs> one that, that builds itself like a, like a, a column of things yeah, you're out being, of You're deconstructing layers. games and like you say you hate now. I am doing it, but I'm doing it to Sonic Frontiers, so it's fine. <laughs> I, 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 wow, I'm okay. with you on that. It's it's not it's not a good game, but actually, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Is that's that's like the worst sort of praise you can give something? That's it's not as bad as I thought. Do you know? Here you go, Chris. There's fishing in it. Oh, oh, oh. You can stop and have a fish. So hold on. Yeah, that's where, why, yeah, that's why, where why do you think that's why? Yeah, why do you think that's something that I that would like take me in? I, no, I, no, I was just, I was just letting you know. It's the meme thing from every RPG ever. And you have fishing, like, yeah. How do it's? It's almost like they're like, how do we make it an RP a good RPG? Well, we've got to have fishing. I, like, ca- no, I kind of feel like yeah. that's just a, make it better. Game. I kind of feel make like a that's a Sega game. thing, though, right? Because they they had like fucking extreme sea bass racing, uh, um, fishing, or some shit like that. And ever since then, they're just like, yeah, got to got to crank in some fishing games. And then other companies took notice, and sold us like, yeah, we could we could do fishing as well. Sure, why yeah. not? Always do the fishing. It's it's a bit of that and a bit of like what Jonesy said, which it, it does feel like that. Do you know how we joked before Sonic Frontiers came out about how it looked like they'd watched gameplay of Breath of the Wild and <laughs> learned all the wrong lessons? There is still a bit of that present in the final game, mixed with a bit of like completely understanding the the joy and the excitement that one derives from playing Shadow of the Colossus has also been massively misinterpreted by this team and <laughs> and integrated into a new product. Um, so is there yeah, any redeeming? So- quality or factor to it the, the, the redeeming quality is i think like jonesy said that it could be much worse and that there are <laughs> that's not a redeeming that quality <laughs> because, well, but in the it's fun that, to be had running around the world yeah. as sonic spinning around like going on like met lines collecting rings like they've, they've still put the sonic stuff in where you if you hit the right things at the right time you can zip mm-hmm. around at a million miles an hour but most of it is what? a slightly empty open world where you're when, yeah. when, when we were at All Time Gaming, I used to get in trouble sometimes in comment sections by being adamant that Sonic was never good. And one of the reasons I thought Sonic was never good was because his USP was that he... It, it, this was a character who... It wasn't just that he was able to go fast, it's that he gotta go fast. <laughs> and yet every level felt like it was designed like it, to, to completely to the contrary, to the point where you picked up enough speed that you felt like you were actually going fast. The likelihood yeah. that you bumped into an enemy or an obstacle that would completely slow you down and force you to start like jogging on the spot again to build up speed like was really annoying, and I never understood that. This is now a game that's like, oh, actually, if we put people in a really big, ugly, empty, open field at least they can actually run at 200 miles an hour and feel like they're moving fast. <laughs> and in that sense, it is the best Sonic game that's ever made. Uh, but, you still, but you're too slow. <laughs> Don't you think you're just too slow? Well, I'm level one out of 99 at speed at the start of the game, so I gave them room for it to improve. I don't know I what do you're wonder like. that. I do wonder how how fast you end up feeling. Wait, yeah, I'm... Having 99 levels for like speed, combat, defense, and ring capacity was like, that's ambitious, so we'll see how quickly <laughs> I get through those. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll rattle off some other things and just say that Need for Speed Unbound, I think, is good. I think it's the best recent Need for Speed. Oh. But I do think the way its structure means that it gets a little bit repetitive in, I'd say, like the back half. Um, hey, uh, one and... question. Have they gotten rid of that fucking day-night cycle with the two different currencies? Uh, they haven't got rid of the day-night cycle, but there are uh, no longer two different currencies. Okay. You're still, at the end of the day, everything has been changed to be about money. Okay. Uh, there's no concept necessarily of like respect or anything yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. It's yeah. just about money, um, which Good. they then double down on by having <laughs> things like races that have buy-ins. So like you might have to pay five grand to enter, and if you don't finish in like the top four, you might net lose money in that race. So okay. and also there's gambling, so where you can like bet on yourself to beat certain people. Lots of ideas around the risk reward of the accumulation of money, which makes sense, but it's just the formula gets a little bit dry in the back end because. For reasons I won't go into, but structurally it's a little bit strict. And then Marvel's Midnight Suns um, mm. was the last console game I played, and that um, I think is fine. Um, it's not for me, uh, in so much as I'm not one of those people who gets really stuck into uh, uh, tactics games and turn-based tactics games, let alone ones driven by sort of card systems and deck building ideas. But I do think that it's like fairly satisfying and it streamlines a lot of the deck building nonsense in such a way where you can just kind of dive in and use moves that look cool and flashy and feel relatively satisfying to string together. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the writing and sort of like the presentation away from the combat, as was well documented when the game came out, is pretty guff. Uh, like it's a re- relatively ugly game um, in a way that I like. I was not particularly enamored with and there's a lot of sort of like talking and socializing in a way that I... I, it like it feels a bit confused at times. Like, yeah, I don't know gotta, why I need to. You've got to do like relationship stuff, don't you? Like not not like exactly, romantic, yeah. but like buddy up with people. Exactly. There's there's whenever you're not in combat, you're at this place called the Abbey, which is essentially your hub where you run around. And there's some XCOM like elements to the Abbey where you're improving certain facilities that then give you like like certain bonuses or abilities or things that you can do in combat, but. Every member of sort of the Avengers Midnight Suns kind of hybrid that's been created for the sake of the game exists in the Abbey, and you can go up to them and you can talk to them, and every day you can spar with someone, and every day you can hang out with people, and there are groups within that that meet up on certain nights, and you can hang out with them, give people gifts, there are friendship meters, people will come to you and ask for help on certain things. So it's like a high school Like at the moment. Yeah, literally at the moment I am helping organize someone's uh, surprise birthday party. (laughs) And like one of the moral decisions I have to make is there's been implied that this is a character who actually genuinely wouldn't like to be surprised. And so I have a decision to make right now of like, I can go to her and tell her that about the surprise party. But at the same time, I've already like enlisted Peter Parker's help to organize the party room. And the, um, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Woman. It sounds trash. Yeah, I'm sorry. It so sounds so wank. Like, what, what, it's, I, it's, what it's, do I want really in my weird. XCOM-like game from Marvel? Not that. <laughs> Yeah, but bro, then 10 minutes later, you're controlling like Ghost Rider, Blade, and Spider-Man in a, t- in a, in a turn-based tactical uh, action game developed by the XCOM guys. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, oh but- shit, like, now, I'm, now, now I'm doing this. Um, so that's what's that's weird. Um, that, that's kind of like I'm saying, going to go really quick now. That, that, that's like Quantum Break saying, like, oh yeah, there's, there's a really cool like fun shooter game, but you've got to watch this really boring TV show in the middle. It's a, it's a, it's a bit like that. It is yeah. a bit like that, yeah. and uh, it's heavy enough with the latter that it's not going to be for everyone. Something that I think should be for, but more people genuinely, Mario and Rabbids: Sparks of Hope uh, is is a genuinely good game, um, and I think that they have done that kind of thing that you want from <clears throat> you know every follow up, which is that they've doubled down on everything a good sequel should do, which is like cut the fat. And uh, you know, patch over the things that were wrong or weren't implemented well or were missing in the original game, and sort of like just build on what worked. Um, and I think it's a really sort of nice quintessential example of how a sequel can build on its predecessor. And is a game that, by the sounds of things, according to Ubisoft's uh, reporting, more people should have played. Um, <laughs> I played Grounded for the first time since it went into like 1.0 and has apparently become a very good game. And sure enough, it is a far better game than it was when we played it. And I didn't like rage quit after the first session because our house (laughs) got destroyed by ants. Um, (laughs) And uh, Case case of the Golden Idol, not Curse of the Golden Idol, but Case of the Golden Idol. Uh Um, I've been playing that on... on, Put it this way, that's the first game in the last year that I've simultaneously got installed on my, uh, my gaming PC, my laptop, and my work laptop. 
um, because I I just like to jump into it at all times and try and make small incremental bits of progress oh, on each mystery that I'm trying okay. to solve. Interesting. Um, presentation mm-hmm. wasn't for me whenever I looked at videos. Like, if you watch a trailer for that game, you'll be like, what the fuck is this? But it's a really uh, smartly made... Um, satisfying sort of like mystery game that takes some of the ideas from things like uh, Curse of the Obra Dinn in mm-hmm. terms of, hey, here's a scenario that's obviously gone wrong. Like one of the pages is literally like, here's a dude who spontaneously combust in front of like, and you are presented with a looping gif of that situation. And you have to click around, look at people's, uh, the, the objects people have on them, some other incidental clues from around these scenes. And you have to basically, like in Obra Dinn, you have to almost like write a report of what happened happened to get to this point yeah and so you yeah. collect things like names and objects and intent and things like that and you'll fill out a report that will say like chris joanidas set alex jones on fire with gasoline because he was angry that he didn't receive a dildo in the will of blow and like the <laughs> words like dildo and will and gasoline are all clues that you collected to piece together what happened yeah um, sure. great little game uh, not super cheap. It was like, I think it's in the like fifteen to twenty pounds region. Oh shit! Um, so maybe yeah. you want to keep an eye on for a price drop because uh, it's probably not super long. But yeah, um, games. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was my favorite like finish ever. Yeah, games. Yeah. Well, um, all right, yeah. I'm going to try and keep it sweet. Got gotcha, Josie. So it's short and sweet, so that we can we can get into um, the up and coming games. Um, COD. I was one of the Christmas COD people. Christmas uh, COD, yeah, baby. Christmas quarters. Uh, uh, cool campaign. Been enjoying it. I nearly finished it. Um, one thing that sort of struck me about Modern, Modern Warfare 2 is I don't remember the other Modern Warfare's feeling quite so uh, black ops. Like they're ba- it thinks it's an action movie. And hmm, there are certain points where I was kind of like, what, like, is this, okay, it's just going full action Wait, you, movie sort of. You, you didn't just... think that the Modern Warfare games went action movie? Yeah, I, 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 I thought it was the opposite. Their action movie and yeah. Black Ops are like not so action movie. But and, um, action, uh, maybe action movie is the wrong thing. More like um, like the way the story goes. I see, I remember the last Modern Warfare, maybe the one before that, being more like making sense to me in a progress, a progressive. Like, oh, this is like a modern uh, military sort of like sort of simulation. Like this, it makes sense to me. Whereas this one seems to be a little more bombastic. Maybe that's what I mean. As opposed, yeah. To so, action. so like the the previous um, Modern Warfare two, where you were in this ski um ski mobiles and just kind of like going over fucking ravines what, and shit yeah, totally like more like the story more like the story of this one the story okay, of this one okay, is not okay. the individual set piece the story <laughs> of it is a bit more like i was i wasn't expecting it okay it's a bit more like and now this happens and i'm like oh, now this person did this and i was like oh all right <laughs> okay i wasn't expecting i was expecting more just yeah. like other unnamed middle eastern man is trying to blow something up and then you know i was more of that I was yeah expecting. yeah but no it was it's but it was cool. It was cool for it. Um, but it obviously still has all that Modern Warfare energy as well. Yeah. Um, I actually played some ground. I played some ground war for the first time. Wow, am I shit at that? Um, got absolutely. Is it the destroyed. multiplayer mode. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. What's the? Uh, is that the? Is that the sixty-four player thing? I think yeah, yeah, sixty-four player thing. So it's like a mini, uh, full-on battle with helicopters, tanks, but in a relatively small area where you're trying to capture capture points yeah. yeah i just got absolutely destroyed by people that are much better at modern warfare than me so that, that like, that's what it's um, all devolves into right like how much how many hours have you devoted into this particular multiplayer like totally that's why i don't play cod yeah, anymore because i exactly. just don't have the time I'm well, I, I think it. there's i think there's also a thing of like i of i think i'm of an age where i can't get any better <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm never going to get better. I'm just going to gradually get worse. Well, I don't. I don't agree. I don't think that's true at all. I think that if, I th- if you've got the time to put into it, you will undoubtedly see thing, benefits. Yeah. Undoubtedly. If you if you played four Maybe. hours a day uh, every day, and we came back in a month, two months, you'd be getting massively, demonstrably better. I think every time. Maybe. That would be that's nice to think that could that could happen. So yeah, you're not yeah. that old, well, Jonesy. It can happen to you, Jonesy. It can that happen old. to you. <laughs> I've, it's, it's, I've watching my six year old play games is mental because he gets good so fucking quick. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. Like he, the way he loves Sonic team racing at the moment. And the difference between him and my four year old, my four year old like finishes like middle of the pack on most races. My foot, my six year old wins every single race. It's like, he's getting bored of it because it's too easy. <laughs> and I'm just like, I miss the days when I could play a game and become that good at it. 
right, in such mm. a short space of time. Anyway, I'll move on. <laughs> um, we talked about Sonic Frontiers. Um, Elden Ring. Oh, Elden oh, Ring yeah, is a game. Shit. Oh, this is what I've been waiting for. The, Jonesy, don't worry about talking about the significant releases of 2023. Let's just talk about Elden Ring for the rest of this pod. Let's go for it. I want to hear. I want, delve in, buddy. Because I was very surprised when you said that you had started this. Because I, I never thought. I was surprised as well. Yeah, I never would have thought that you, A, would have gotten to it. And B, if you were to go to it, that you would have beaten Jamie to the punch. But you did, and hey, Elder Kudos. So, okay, let me let me let me be honest. Okay, let me be <laughs> honest. I was expecting to hate Elden Ring, mm-hmm. um, mainly because I, I'm not a big fan of FromSoft games. I find them like I find them super frustrating because when you have like trying to fight a boss and you can't beat them, and I'm just like, ah, screw this game, and then I just leave. That's my kind of experience of this. I will say Elden Ring is so much more approachable than any of the other ones I've played, mainly because the because it's open world, the fact that you can then go, I can get out there and I can just like kill some low level mobs and I can get some, you know, um, some souls, whatever, to yeah. um, uh, go and trade in runes. Um, where they are. It's so much more, I like so much more approachable and I can get into it and I can actually have some fun with it. And also the fact that you can just get on a horse and just take off. We, we played it briefly, um, uh, Chris's house last year and I and I was like oh my fucking god I'm gonna hate this game like it feels exactly the same it's no different I don't like it but when I actually started playing it and I'm playing this it has does have a story it does feel like it has a story it feels like it's pushing you in a direction but it tells you to take it at your own speed yeah and there's just and I do I know whilst the op- the over the open world is mainly about combat and there's not like you know a lot of puzzles to solve and things like that it does feel like a big uh, fantasy world where things are happening and you can just get involved or not. Um, there are almost little side quests. There are NPCs that I wasn't expecting who are like, I met a little man who went, oh, I'm supposed to be the heir of this castle, but then all these dickheads came and took it. Can you get it back for me? And I was like, yeah, all right, mate. Let me go, let me go help you out. But in doing like that, then I bump up into the thing I don't like about FromSoft games, which is if you die, everyone comes back to life and you've got to do it again. And if you... You sit down at a fire, then everyone comes back to life and you've got to do it again. Um, but even that is not actually as bad as as I thought it was going to be because like some of those little hub areas, like the castle, I cleared out the castle. Um, I defeated like the main dude who was blocking you, the guy from the NPC from going back to his castle. Yeah. And none of them's respawned. And I was like, okay, I like that. I like that it's, it's not just all or nothing. Um, and I've been having much more fun with it than I thought. Um, Yes, I've, mate. I'm learning yes. how to cheese <laughs> yes. the, right, the right bosses. There was a giant that was really fucking me off because he wouldn't die. And I eventually figured out that if I just keep cheesing him in a certain way, then I can kill him. And that was all good. Oh, yeah. There was a big blob on a beach with tentacles that was really annoying. And I was doing no damage. And then I figured that if I'm on my horse, it can't turn around quick enough to get me. So I spent about 15 minutes just slashing it with my sword, <laughs> really low level. And my dad came around for like, to, uh, so I said, oh, I'll come over. I'll make you some food. And he kept turning up and he sort of sat down and went, what are you doing? I went, oh, just give me a minute. I've just got to kill this blob. <laughs> About 15 <laughs> minutes later, I'm still sitting there. She's like, what are you doing? Jonesy, those things. I went, oh my God, Jonesy. I've got to kill the blob. Just give me give me another 10 minutes. Just, so just, just so you know, those blob things, they've got armor all around except for the front. All right. And if you just attack the face and chop off the tentacles, you'll get it killed in like, I, I was so low uh, level compared to it that I was doing barely any damage, but from right. the back, because it couldn't get me. 20 minutes, mate. It was all good. 20 minutes from the back. I, I mean, it. that that would get everyone down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 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 genu- A-A-Y-R, baby. I'm genuinely surprised because uh, I, I'd earmarked it as a game that you probably wouldn't have enjoyed. So that's good. No, I, I actually am enjoying it, Adam. The one thing that I, this, the, the rate at which you like level up seems really slow. Um, I haven't found any like new armor. I've not found any, like I found a few weapons. Um, I haven't even found like a wand yet, whatever you call it, a staff. I can't even do any magic or anything yet. I found a shitty crossbow I can barely even use because it's like, you're not high enough on level yet. <laughs> but I'm getting there, man. I'm getting there. Hell yeah. Mm. So, you st- so you're still actively playing? Yes. I fucked with a giant who was, Two giants who were pulling a big cart and then they killed me because I fucked them. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. What, what starting class did you choose? Just out of interest. Uh, I think I chose the knight, like a, just a bog standard, um, like he comes with a shield and a sword. Right, okay, nice. nice. I, can't remember what he, I can't remember what he's called. I don't know. 
uh, the type. Uh, was it Vanguard? Um, oh, that sounds about right. I, maybe. Strong, no magic. Yeah. Yeah, you see that. I, I just I, hold my shield up. I, I reckon you've got to go for like a... I reckon you've got to go for, for a magic starting, like something with a little bit of magic. That's just my So I, I, I spoke to our Discord. I chatted to a few of those guys and I sort of said, what, do you, what would you recommend? And they mm. sort of said, oh, do you know what? You can go for a, like a strength class at first. And as long as you put a few points into certain areas and you just, you know, you'll be all right. And I've, I'm doing, I've been doing okay. Yeah. Um, I've gone into my first, I'm in like a dungeon where you go down some ethereal lift. And there's these dudes with spears who walk really slowly. Um, oh, so point. you've gone down to the well with the with the lights, like underground with all the lights yes. and shit. Oh, that's quality. Yeah, that that's a hard area. Just FYI. Yeah. So I yeah I took out like everyone except for like two guys, and then one of them jabbed me up with a, with a spear. I died, and then everyone came back to life. And yeah. I just threw my controller and went I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the last thing I played about a week ago. <laughs> Does that sound like from software? Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm looking. No, I'm looking forward uh, to jumping back enjoy. into it, fellas. Now that I've got got a war out of the way, hell yeah. I'm. I'm mm. really looking forward to the point. I'm hoping I get there, which is where. Um, okay, this is going to be a weird comparison. I'm learning to play the guitar as well as playing Elden Ring, <clears> and there's a really weird thing. And when I'm learning to play the guitar, sometimes I jump back into the app that I'm learning on, and suddenly I can play something that I didn't that I was really struggling with before. It's like oh, because I've been practicing, right? Yeah, and then the feeling of then being able to then play something you couldn't play is pretty wicked. And I do think that if I stick with Elden Ring, I will have that feeling when I face a boss that I can own. There's a guy that I, I think I, I went to him too early and actually you said to me, Chris, no, like go, go somewhere else. Don't do that yet. Yeah, yeah. And I've gone away. I'm like, I'm going to level up. I'm going to get better. And then I'm going to go and have a fight with him. And if I fuck him up, I do think I'll have that sense of, Oh, um, absolutely. Overcoming. Absolutely. That, that's, that, then, that, that, is, that is the FromSoft experience in a nutshell. J- but I've, ne- I've never got that for, yet from a yeah. FromSoft game. I've never quite got there. And I've always been like a bit sad that I haven't because that's the, yeah. like you say, that's the FromSoft thing. Jamie, how, how does that make you feel? That, that Jonesy is giving it a, a um, fucking Jonesy stamp of approval. Definitely a bit of FOMO, especially <laughs> as kind of like um, a, a lot of the podcasting that I was doing over the Christmas period was inevitably sort of like game of the year lists and Give the year discussions and yeah, it's it's hard to you know be playing Need for Speed Unbound and being told how you just didn't play the best game that came out not just this year but maybe any year. Um, so I'll amend that in due course, um, as we'll get to in a little bit. Um, there's not a crazy amount I want to play until at least the end of this month, um, and then going forward, it doesn't dramatically heat up either, depending on when certain release dates start to get filled in. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's time. There's time. Um, two last things I'll really quickly touch on. Mythic Quest Season 3 uh, is out, and uh, people probably might remember that from the Game Awards, I think it was, when Rob, Ma- Rob McElhenney came out and was like, Season 3 is coming. Um, no, it wasn't Game Awards, was it? It was something else. I can't remember. Yeah, anyway, it, it um, kind of stealth dropped, didn't it? I've, like, no, they didn't make a big noise yes. about it. No, he said that, and then I looked for, looked for it. It wasn't out yet on Apple TV, and then it suddenly was out, and I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. I love that show. I like Mythic Quest is... Such a damn good show. And it has some of the best dramatic episodes of any show that I have seen. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's season two. There's a couple of really random episodes that I absolutely love. Like, genuinely think are, uh, like, should have won awards if they didn't. I mean, maybe they did. And I just don't know. But if yeah. you haven't seen Mythic Quest and you like video games, you need to see Mythic Quest. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and Knives Out the Glass Onion, I did check out. Um, it's a good movie. Yeah. Do you know what? Yeah, it's, Do a you know good, what? it's a good movie. I liked Knives Out. I really liked, and one of the, and I did really like. Um, I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, Daniel Blanc, Craig. Benoit, Benoit Blanc. Uh, Benoit Blanc is it? <laughs> yeah. Benoit Blanc. Mister Blanc. I wanted more. <laughs> Mister Blanc. I wanted more Benoit Blanc. So I watched Glass Onion. Didn't think Glass Onion was a particularly good film. Oh, like it didn't tick the same box for me that Knives Out ticked. No, like that's. Oh yeah, I'm be, it was fun. Like it was a lot of fun to be had with it, and I liked mm-hmm. what they did. I liked Edward Norton. Yeah, I like a lot of the. Um, but it, it didn't quite tick the box of Knives Out in that I was hoping. It was kind of a different feel. Yeah. But it was more Benoit Blanc, and I do like Benoit Blanc. And, so. and I think, I think it's, they've, it's fun. I think they've said, like, the, the third one is going to be a different kind of feel to the other two anyway. Okay. So, so they're kind of, like, building out this kind of, like, idea. I, th- I think what they're trying to do is, like, if you think of the old Poirot um, stories where, like, yeah, it's a murder mystery, but they all happen in different kind of ways and unfold in different ways, et cetera. No, it's, it's a good film. Yeah. Because this felt like film. they just... F- 
this felt like they just went for go the murder mystery in, in some respects. I know they yeah. don't, but it feels that it felt a bit like they did, and I was kind of surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I can't say much because that no, we're, we're we're on. We're te- yeah, we don't yeah, we don't say anything. But that's I know what you, I know, I, but I do know what you mean. But then, having as someone who rewatched Knives Out also over the Christmas period, you'd be surprised how much that film does that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I did a rewatch. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. I think I think they both subvert the traditional kind of like who done it in, but like you're right. You I, are I can't, right. I can't I really mean. spoil either film. I don't want to no, spoil Knives Out mean. for the sake of it. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's a film where like yeah. put it this way, like <laughs> like you know that you're watching a clever film that's not over yet, so you know you don't have all the pieces of the puzzle. But they're both Agreed. very comfortable to give you more piece of the puzzle than you presume you would have got at that point in yeah. a more like d- derivative murder mystery. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. I was. It was fun actually because I was chatting to someone whilst watching Knives Out um, and was talking about the um, uh, was what, what's the term the um, un the untruthful narrator or something. I can't remember what you call it. Unreliable. 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 And how I love that. I love that using films and you know. And she was saying like, "What's that?" And I was saying like. Oh, well, yeah, we all love that usual suspects moment where they, where like the someone realizes that the walks back through every step and was like, "This is what that meant, and this is where that came yes, from, and this yeah. is how, yeah, yeah, that, that, and this is where they lied to you about that, and this, that'll is, they, never, this is weird about that." Like, in films, that'll never get old. Yeah, no, I absolutely love that. <laughs> I love that. Anyway, enough of us yabbering on about what we've been up to over this Christmas period. It is time uh, to talk about the significant releases of twenty twenty three. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we are going to go through chronologically through the games that we have dates for. We know when they're coming out. And then after we've gone through those ones, we are going to circle back and we're going to talk about the games that we know roughly when they're coming out, but we are not certain. So that's why we've sort of separated these two things out. So if we miss out something that you're like, hey, that's coming out early 2023. We haven't missed out. It's just that we've yeah. put it in a different part. Of the it's, it's also a bit of a, an asterisk here, right, where uh, things may change. And also, we we probably didn't we probably didn't include like one hundred of the fucking weeb anime games that are coming out this year. So, oh th- yeah, this is a yes. curated list. <laughs> it's a massively curated <laughs> list of things that we wanted to mention. Um, all right, so uh, kicking us off on the list, Fire Emblem Engage is coming out in January t- on January twentieth. Um, followed not too long after by Forspoken, which is coming out on January twenty fourth. Um, now, for spoken, I know it's, Jamie. I think you played the demo, didn't you? I, think you I did. I did. Yeah. And they've recently said that for spoken is going to be over eighty gigs, so um, it's going to be a chunky game to get on your uh, on your hard drive. The big one, and not to kind of retread the ground. We, you know, we <laughs> walked over in that demo discussion, but this is one where those reviews are going to have a lot of heavy lifting to do to sort of mm. change course on how I'm feeling about for spoken at the moment. I, I'm not going to say its fate is sealed, but I, I'm going to watch from a safe distance until uh, it's until otherwise noted. So, so not a day one for you, Jamie. Surprising. It is not a day one. I'd love to be a PS5 cuck, but uh, Forspoken is not a day one. And that's because, again, I, I not to jump around too quickly, but there's a game coming out within three days of Forspoken <laughs> that is a day one. So that makes my it's- life slightly easier. Yeah, Jamie's actually nailed it because um, so yeah, so Dead Space is coming out January twenty seventh, and I would absolutely agree. Like that's going to be a foregone conclusion for ninety five percent of people that are going to pick that up. It's going to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting the Dead Space remake. Forspoken will live and die on the re- reviews. I think um, that yeah. there, are, I think there will be a big contingent of people that have already made the decision. You know, fair enough. I think we've, a couple of people on our Discord and that we've talked to are sort of really looking forward to it. Yeah, but yeah, I think if that gets reviewed well. I think it could actually be surprising by how well it does. Yeah, I, I reckon the potential to be big. Yeah, you know when you say when you say reviews, I reckon it, less so like major outlets, and I, I think that's going to live or die more on kind of like social media and influences. Mm-hmm. I can Agreed. see a bit of that. Yeah, I agree. Well, yeah, I agree. Yeah, a big skill up video to start start of twenty twenty three. I can. I, re- I, I recommend. recommend yeah. I strongly. Yeah, exactly. I strongly recommend. I strongly Spoken. recommend. Spoken. Jesus that, Christ! That could do. That could actually change the game, especially if you get a lot of streamers who start playing it, and then you you know go and gets into all of that. And yeah, boom. yeah. But, but a bit of a strange one. I, I wonder if that one's going to be a case of like, no one's going to care about it when it comes out. Eventually, it's going to build up in momentum because of some uh, social media people, and then maybe towards the middle of the year, it starts picking up, or it just dies. So. Or it just dies in the sounds. Yeah, yeah. either or. Uh, you guys kind of skipped over Fire Emblem. I mean, 
just to let people know, we're not skipping over it because we don't have because we don't like it, but it's more because we don't really have anything to say. I don't think either, any of us uh, have played any Fire Emblem, so kind of whoosh, over yeah. our heads. We're going yeah, to skip so. over a few like that. So like Chris said, it's not that we don't like them or we're not looking forward to them, but we don't have anything to add to the conversation. Oh. So hey, um, de- No, Dead Space though, January 27th, the remake of Dead Space, something that I think hotly anticipated. Um, I th- I'm, I'm excited for it. Shh. Although I'm also terrified because I couldn't play that game uh, without my wife coming into the room. Stream it, stream off. it, stream it. <laughs> so we'll have to, um, yeah, we'll, I'll have to see if I actually can bring myself to play it. What I think, you, what are you thinking, Chris? Are you going to jump in that day one? I'd like to. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a day one for me, because I, I think, like, like I said, after God of War, I'm, I'm just really looking forward to getting back into Elden Ring. And I think, I wouldn't say that there's anything that's really taking my fancy until later. Like Dead Space for me is definitely one I want to play, but I, I don't think I need it day one, to be honest. Uh, and then, so January, we'll also see the release of Season, A Letter to the Future, which will be dropping on January 31st. And then, I'm, do you know what, it's a weird one. I'm going to say probably the most, um, uh, well, what's the word? Not contentious. What do I mean? What? The most like- Anticipated? Um, no, no, I know I know what Jones is getting at. It's like contentious is not a bad word for it. Yeah, controversial. controversial. Yeah. That's a good word. Contentious, controversial um, games of the year already, which is Hogwarts Legacy, which will be dropping February tenth. I, I say it's it's controversial. It's not like to ninety five percent of people that are going to be playing that game. They're not going to yeah. give a shit. They don't spend any time on the internet. They just love playing around with Harry Potter and. Well, and a, have you fellas old. seen that? It, it's it's been cracking the top ten in the Steam charts just as a pre order. It's yeah, like. You got to understand. Doing seriously this well. game is going to be fucking massive, like in, insanely massive, like disgu- so disgustingly big. Thing. I watched a video <laughs> recently that sort of said the contr- they think the controversy is actually helping it um, because <laughs> because the, it's kept it in the kept the conversation going. So not not like the controversy itself has helped it, more like the fact that people have been talking about it. I, it's almost like you can't help but hear okay. its name, and then it's like. Oh yeah, Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, yeah, nothing to do with the controversy. Yeah, it's like a no, um, uh, bad publicity is good publicity, right? Like that kind of thing. Mm. I, yeah. I think there's, a, I think there's a bit of that, but I think that when we get that report at the end of week one that Hogwarts Legacy has sold like five million <laughs> units in the first seven days, I think ninety eight percent of those units are going to go to people who would go, "What controversy?" Oh no, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard about that. Oh, J.K. Rowling. You know, I did read something about her. Yeah, what does that have to do with? Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, you're not on Twitter in the same fucking spheres that we are, where, <laughs> the, or even Reddit now, like, there's a major subreddit that is, well, yeah, I don't want to get into the thing. I'm going to play Hogwarts Legacy because I want to play a good a, a video game that looks good. That's my hot take. I, I want to play a good a video, video game their... that looks good. <laughs> I, so That's I'm, 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 hey. I get you. Put, I, for, I, put I, up I my you, gravestone, I get Chris. You, yeah, I get you. Do you know what? My name is Jamie McCulloch, and I'm here to play good video games that look good. <laughs> I came here to fucking play it's games, awful. and I don't fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is that sad but true. <laughs> like, it, it looks, it does look really good from, you know, I've watched a few of their uh, play-alongs and things that they've done so far, and I, and I like what they're saying. I still can't help but think it's all going to come crumbling down to some degree when it drops and is nowhere near as good as people are hoping. I think there'll be a bit of that, a teeny I, bit. I, I don't know, fellas. I, like, I, I, in, in much the same way, Jamie, that you say like the people that will buy it and enjoy it are the same people who don't give a shit or haven't heard about the controversy. I think at, by the same token, those people, they just need a decently solid oh, Harry Potter agreed. game. And, and like, that's what it looks like. You know, it, it doesn't yeah, it need to be. Sales. It doesn't need to be amazing. It just needs to do what it says it's going to do, which is like Harry Potter Simulator, and do it fairly okay. As long as it doesn't have like plagued by bugs or anything, it'll be just fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't you think that if it was if it was as good, if it plays as good as it looks at the moment, I think we could be talking like that's a contender for game of the year by end of the year. Oh, 100%. By a yeah. lot of standards. Yeah. Yeah. Ha- however, I don't, I don't think it's going to get there. Yeah, my, the reality of the game is going to not be that. If you ask me to do a Metacritic, Metacritic prediction, which I know is such like a cliche thing to <laughs> like, sort of like talk about games, but I'd put it at the low 80s on Metacritic. Okay. And with, with the thing being, a lot of 
not, I'm not going to say major publications. I don't think there's been a statement yet from like an IGN or a GameSpot, but a lot of publications have already committed to not reviewing uh, this game. Uh, certainly, a lot of individual sort of like creators. Really? And, yeah, genuinely. Well, because it would be because it would be publicity, and they don't want to. And they don't, they they don't want to publicly. They're actively boycotting the game, and that extends to not publicizing it. That makes that so like. <sighs> That's so weird to me. Like, I, I get, I, I do understand, like, I understand the controversy and I, I understand why people are annoyed. But I do get to, I, there's a weird place where I start to think, like, hold on, are we now at the point where we need to do a deep dive into the background of all of the producers, writers, script writers, directors? No, because if we did that, no games. one would be able to play anything. And they know that, <laughs> but they just want us to not be able to play the things that they want to talk about, the fact that we can't play. But that makes sense because that makes sense to me like a player saying I'm going to not play this because of my own convictions. I completely understand that. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You do you. You need to be happy with what yeah. you're playing. But when it comes to a publication, I find that fucking bizarre, man. Yeah, I also find it bizarre because, yeah, because it's, it's, it's an entire team of like thousands, thousands of people, right? Like, well, not thousands, thousands, you know what I mean? And, 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 like, sh- and, no, shouldn't, well, and shouldn't they do the same to every, every game that comes out? It should be like, no, we've checked the background of the writers and the directors right. and the producers and we're happy like, they're all good people. Have these pe- same outlets or individuals or creators not reviewed a Blizzard release for X years, or not, and not really reviewed a Ubisoft release for X years? Right. Yeah. The right, chances exactly. are the chances are that they have, but there's something about this specific um, point of friction that is that is uh, you know getting a lot it of seems people inconsistent. talking. It seems like inconsistent with your with yeah. a sense of like morality or whatever. Potentially for, for the publications, not for the individuals. Like if you're an individual, do what the hell you want. I guess that's up to you. Essentially. Anyway, but but yeah, it, it's looking really good. And look, I've got two young kids, and I've got a wife who fucking loves Harry Potter, so I've got no chance of <laughs> this not being played really, like a lot. In my I, I, I can I can see the headlines out. now from some of these publications that do choose to cover it. Uh, this year's Elden Ring question mark. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> it's good to see Jamie reckons you said low eighties, Jamie eighty two, eighty three. I'm going like low seventies. I think realistically, I'm going like to say 70s. I'm going to say. I say 86, 87, somewhere there. Genuinely. Can I invoke another game that looked really good? Forspoken? And no, this is maybe this maybe this is unfair. No, because we don't know about Forspoken yet. Star Trek the video game. Oh god, here we go. The fucking this gorn. Again. Here the we fucking go. Gorn. Here we go. Jesus Christ. That looked great. That looked great. And uh, apparently, I mean, uh, you know, it was gonna be great. And when it came out, dog shit. Apparently <laughs> it was gonna be great. <laughs> Moving on. Moving no, it's gorn. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, okay, so February 21st, we'll see Atomic Heart come out, uh, followed on the same day by Like a Dragon Ishin. Oh. Um, but then, the next day, fellas, PlayStation VR 2. So if you've got a few hundred pounds to drop <laughs> on the latest PlayStation VR headset, what are you thinking? You're both PS5 owners. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I qualify for that part of the uh, the <laughs> bargain that you lined up. I'm not sure I qualify for the other bar, part of it. How much uh, was it? Three hundred and fifty quid. Was that where we were at with the PSVR two? I'm gonna have to check it. Can't remember. It was uh, quite. I think a it was, lot. Like it was compar- more. I, it was like five hundred, bro. It was. Yeah, I was gonna say it was comparable to the console, right? Yeah, I think um, it was like five hundred. The bundles that they were talking about. I'm, I've got no doubt that it, that it's going to be a really impressive piece of kit, and I would you know, really like to try it once it's all up and running. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Um, Five hundred and twenty nine ninety nine. It's 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 that's a lot right now. Like there's a lot of things that are vying for people's money um, in and outside of the world of video games. Fellas, you, you could buy you could buy the, need... the top level Steam Deck for that price. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, I, and fine, like, it's not I've VR, far, but still, like, fucking hell. No, but I've I've got far more use for like a a more at least something like a handheld console that's more powerful and more versatile than the Switch in my life right now than I do for a VR headset. That's just like, I I went, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say something interesting that I mentioned to you guys before the pod was, um, so my, my, I bought my brother with a couple of family members, chipped in, bought him a PlayStation 5 um, digital version for his birthday tomorrow, uh, when this is coming out. Um, And I bought it in the morning. They were sold out by the afternoon. And that was like three, that was the uh, 380 quid. And they were completely sold out. You can get disc versions all over the all over the internet at the moment. There's a lot available, but they're like 520 quid. And the PSVR 2 is 530 quid. So the reality of people actually dropping when they yeah. don't want to spend that much on a PlayStation 5, some people, I just can't see them the PS head VR head yeah. 2 headset, it, which it, is the same price drop. It, like it's, it's hard, right? Like it, it's funny. I was reading an article today actually. Um that was saying 
PSVR 2 actually, even with the cost of PS5, actually represents a, a decent um, price point, right? And, and it's mad to think of it this way. To get it, to get into VR. To, to get into high-end VR, because you've got to remember the specs of the PlayStation VR 2 compared to the specs of the PlayStation VR 1. VR 1 was like, no, we're going to go as fucking entry-level as pants as possible, and we just want people to experience VR. But this one is like, no, bro, we, you've got like fucking dual 2K fucking OLED screens with foveated rendering and and the eye tracking and this, that, the other. It's like, there's a lot of really good tech in this. Um, but the way that they were saying it is like, look, if you want to play these types of games on a PC, yes, you need the, the headset and the headset might cost more or cost less. Like if you say uh, uh, MetaQuest 2, okay? It's like, that's cheaper than what PSVR 2 is. But if you want to use that, not in its standalone thing, and you want to tether it to computer, what kind of graphics card do you need to, to run these things in the same way that this VR 2's, PlayStation VR 2 is going to run? Like, you need a high-end graphics card. And how much is a high-end graphics card going to cost you, especially in this market? So it was an interesting kind of thing, an interesting kind of tech that I never considered. At the same time, it just seems like s- still such a massive fucking barrier of entry, especially when like uh, it's coming out on the same day horizon call of the mountain as that their vr experience they're like you know killer app for vr but it's just not that enticing at all and i think that's the main problem that vr overall has like if you're not talking half-life alex you're not talking beat saber okay which funny enough i think comes bundled with playstation vr2 or as a launch title for playstation vr2 like if you take those out of it what interesting games are there on PlayStation VR 2. Like, yeah, you've got experiences and whatever, but like, like from fucking PlayStation London Studios or whatever it's called, but really there's no killer app for it. Yeah. I, like I look at Horizon Call of the Mountain as someone who even cares quite a lot about that world and has, you know, played and finished both Horizon games and liked them very much. Yeah. And there's nothing about that kind of traditional, like, oh, have you ever used a bow and arrow in VR? And it's like, well, actually, at this point, yes, I have multiple <laughs> times. Thank you for asking. Yeah, um, and it's overrated. And I don't know that I... Well, it's it's not that it's overrated. Like, we've all had that kind of alleluia moment, or eureka moment, rather, with uh, VR, um, where you go like, oh, shit, like, that felt good, or that felt yeah. real, or that felt, you know, insert adjective here. The issue is that VR can't consistently continue delivering them without consistently delivering new and interesting and different experiences. And that software, for me, is still the sticking point. And you just kind of hit the nail on the head, Chris, which is that I would unpack this PlayStation VR 2 and I'd look at it and it would be like glossy and shiny and matty. And I would rotate it in my hand like Cole Phelps and be excited. (laughs) And I'd put it on and be like, now what? And the, the PlayStation haven't answered that question sufficiently for me yet. Yeah. I think that's that's my the article you read, Chris, is, does bring up a number of interesting points. So it's like ha, ha, the, the the barrier to entry for VR on PC can be much higher, like thousands of pounds, yeah. rather than five hundred pounds. I think the difference for me is the number of things you can do with with VR on a PC is so the amount of things you can do is so much more. Like you can, yeah. you can try a whole load of experiences. You can do he's, a whole Chris, load of Chris, shit. It's porn. He's yeah, talking it's, about. Yeah, he's he's talking about porn. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, not even, I'm not even talking about the porn. Actually, you know you what? Can, that, that's like, how PlayStation can, can get this to move. You don't need a killer app. You just need a, a killer porn portal. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I'd PlayStation buy. porn, <laughs> bro, bro. We, we've Maybe. fucking we've solved the financial crisis, right, yet. Maybe if it, maybe if instead of the PlayStation VR two, it was the PlayStation AAYR two, then like maybe I'd be in like you know just spitballing. But yeah, no, I, I'm with you both. I think I think there's not an, there's not a killer app, and there needs to be. And they, when they need the not just an app, there needs to be a killer application in the sense of like a way for people to want to use this and be part of their lives that they can't do without. And the, and hey, Call of the Mountain. Or, you know, it, it's, something it's else not it. is not it. You know what it's they need? It. They need, A, they need Half-Life Alex ported to PlayStation 5, okay? I don't think that's it either. No, no, no. As that, someone that's, who's played Half-Life Alex. That's that's only part one of it. But then what they need is every six months for another Half-Life Alex caliber <laughs> VR game to come out. And that's just not happening. I see. I, I think it's the for me, the problem with VR at the moment is is the way you interact with the world. It's not the games. It's the fact that at the end of the day, standing up in the middle of your room 
like it, I think everyone does this with VR. You stand up at first, you move around, you go, isn't this cool? I can move around and like I can I can get up and get down. But then after about 10 minutes, you're just standing there using the teleport function and using like the whip yeah. around head function. You're not moving. See, we, we need the vision. We need a solution that was the matrix where you fucking jack in with the fucking RCA port in the back of your fucking head, you know? And, and <laughs> you, you need something, man. And you, you just you just lied back like that. But then in your <laughs> mind, you're fucking doing kung fu and flying all over the place. That's what you need. And and then and then when you jack in the back of your head, you can get a limp wristed hand job and it'll feel real and you'll love it. Mm. <laughs> Were you trying to tell me that I can get a hand job? <laughs> no, Nia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is she is she looking at her phone? <laughs> she will be looking at her phone. <laughs> You think that's uh, anyway. pussy you're eating? <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, moving on. As we said, Horizon Call of the Mountain will be coming out February 22nd, the same day PlayStation VR 2 drops. Uh, and then two days later, February 24th, Octopath, Octopath Traveler 2 uh, will come out. Yeah, very, sure. You know, a, a perspective, very fun little game like the first one was. But, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, sure. Also a bit meh. Yeah. Uh, Woe Long Fallen Destiny will be out March 3rd Dynasty bro and then boys Di- Dynasty 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 Dynasty. What did I say Destiny you said Destiny Destiny it, my bad is, was, is this Woe Long the, um, the Team Team Ninja no it is oh, Team Ninja yes not the other one it is not Black Myth Wukong That's as Jonesy was trying to correct him yeah. but this is the Team Ninja yeah um, Soulsborne Th- this looks um, this looks interesting man like I, 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 it's, yeah. it seems like one of those where it's going to be like it's either going to be a cult hit or it's just going to be absolute trash it's going to be yeah we'll see I mean like there's a few kinda, like that this year isn't there <laughs> I could when you look at their history of like making games of that sort whether it's Neo and Neo 2 or even uh, Stranger Paradise last year it's like yeah they're niche but people will like them yeah because they're yeah. probably going to be quite good in a weird way but not for everyone yeah uh, something everyone will like without fail because it's epic <laughs> will be Star Wars Jedi Survivor coming March 17th. A game where every time you die or rest at a bonfire, everyone comes back to life. Jonesy's favorite mechanic. The, the one thing I hate about that game <laughs> is going to be that. It's coming like, back. It's coming back. You can't run from it. Um, yeah. Fellas, I still need to finish the uh, the first one. Oh yeah, you do should it. do that. It's worth it, man. It's worth it. No, I, I was. I know it is. I, I just. Stuck I just don't have. Area. I just don't have the time. Or, or I. Yeah, like I'll find the time. It's just one of those things that, You've like, got three months. Yeah, but I, I want to finish Elden Ring. So, yeah. But I, I might. I might yeah, just put. I might just take a break from Elden Ring and just do it because the, the issue with that was we played it on all time gaming and we went pretty far as all time gaming, and then we obviously lost all those saves, et cetera. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'll play the game again. And I'm like, I'm going through the same shit over and over again. I'm like, oh, this is killing me. That, that's the only reason. It's not that it's not a yeah. good game. It's, it is a good game. It's a very good game. But yeah, it's difficult. I, d- I don't know what I'm hoping with from this. It's just more, it's just more the same. Survivor, it's more of the same, man. I'm, not, I'm just going to say like a bit of more of the same, sure. But like just sequel the hell out of this. Like <laughs> get rid of all the jank, take out all the shit that people found boring or that rub people up the wrong way. And expand on everything that worked. Bigger, uh, more elaborate um, locations with more rewarding exploration linked to them, like a, a more interesting and more engaging upgrade system. Uh, like it looks like they're coming up with some fun ideas for uh, like traversal with the kind of the mounts and stuff like that. Yeah. It looks like at one point you're going to get a homie who you're kind of like fighting with and doing like combo y attacks. Yeah. They've talked about different stances and the fact that there's like a blaster that might be one of those stances. Obviously, stances was like a cool element. Like Ghost of Tsushima, for example, really nailed how you can switch between four stances yeah. in the same fight and it feels natural. So like, they had, they had yeah, stances just, in um like it was it wasn't Jedi Knight 2, it was a uh, Jedi Academy. And and that was right, right, that right, was right. sick. But like I yeah on, on the upgrade system, I, I just hope that they tie um lightsaber upgrades to like actual be meaningful rather than just cosmetic because that that's something that really pissed me off right. in, the, in the previous game I was like why am I doing this who cares yeah I, I do get what you mean you're, yeah, no, you're right, working yeah, your it. ass off just to have like a copper copper handle yeah which it's you like, never oh, see like oh okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> there was there was one thing about the about um, uh, Fallen Order what I I don't know it felt quite you know, you sometimes you feel like you're you can feels like you're playing a game, and some games it feels like you're sort of completely immersed. Yeah, I definitely kind of felt that 
break and that I was definitely playing a game sometimes. Yeah. You almost could see the way the level was set out. Mm. You could see that I've got to get to there. I would like it if that was hidden a little bit more, if I felt a little bit more immersed in, yeah, yeah. in the world as opposed to like, all right, where's my where's my waypoint? Look at my map. Oh, this feels very like a very designed level to do it in a certain way. I just want to be a little bit more immersed. But I I, I had a lot of love for Fallen Order, so I don't want to change it too much. I don't want to get into that and, and sort of be like, oh, good God, what have they done? <laughs> but I'm not saying they will. Yeah, not saying they it'll be too. interesting. Um, so then March 24th, we've got Resident Evil 4 Remake coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think, I, I've picked up the last two, I think. I don't think I'll... No, I th- was it one and was it one and two that came out, and then I don't think I got yeah. three. Three came out, um, but it was the like the least of the three remakes, the the least kind of um, well received. I well guess received. it was it was still fine, yeah. but like yeah, just on the low I, end. I kind of pair two and three more together as well because the remake of one was really like a remaster of the remake that came out on GameCube, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, which is why it was still like. Like two and three were the ones that were like no, we're just gonna like go straight behind the you know over the shoulder action, yeah. third person shooter style shit. Um, this yeah. is a this is a day one for me. Just gonna yeah, yeah, out. okay, me too. But cool. can I can I tell you what? I'm I'm not looking forward to this time because it's just uh, I I feel that like this is where the obnoxious side of all the fucking news outlets and the the fucking YouTubers come out and I just go oh. The, I, I mentioned before, like all these guys, like oh, I play this game once every year on all the different fucking formats, and I just, I don't, I, I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> just the smugness. I'll try, and keep, I just, I'll, I'll try and keep it to a minimum, Chris. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I played the Wii version every every six months. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I did. I did play some of the PC version like six months ago, <laughs> just out of curiosity. Nice. Fair but, enough. I, but I don't replay Resident Evil Four every year. It is the first one of these games that's been remade that I played growing up, though, which is why I'm interested in it. And that's um, cool, yeah. From, that's like, cool. yeah. No, I, I, and I think it'll be, uh, I think yeah, it'll be really be cool, cool, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. But yeah, I just the, the I just, I just the smugness, I just can't handle it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, April twenty eighth, so a whole month Ooh. before um, after Resident Evil Two uh, Four remake comes out, Dead Island Two Boys. Ooh, what is ooh. it? Ten years in the making. Fucking hell. Um, something we never thought we'd actually see. Um, but apparently it is actually coming out April 28th. I am I'm hyped for this. I, I was I was super excited for Dead Island 1 and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. See, I, I was excited for Dead Island 1. I played Dead Island 1 and I wasn't excited for Dead Island 1. Nor was I excited <laughs> for Dead Island 2. Um, and then obviously all the, you know, the storied history of it. But then that last trailer, um, it, it looks good, man. It does look good. And I, I, hope it, <laughs> I hope it doesn't play like Dead Island 1. It's, it's, one thing I will say, it's... <sighs> I think I'm. I think I'm giving it leeway because it's you know been, it's been anticipated for such a long time. I think we're all over this whole zombie thing now, though, aren't we? Like long. Yeah. It's, it's uh, been. It's been long. No. 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 Mm. Okay. I think we. Th- I've said this many times before. I think we pick and choose when to be bored with zombies, and it's not because we're bored of zombies. It's because we're bored of the game that we're talking about that contains zombies. Hence, we just went through a whole section talking about yeah. Resident Evil Four Remake once, yeah, and didn't mention like re- once that it was one of the most iconic zombie-filled, zombie-fueled franchises in existence. I feel like as a remake, I don't know. I suppose I give remakes a, a pass because they're remakes, so it's not like they're having a brand new idea. But then maybe I shouldn't give them a pass. No, no, should, no, but I I, I'm definitely I giving it. I don't know. It's just one of the. It's just one of those things, like like yeah. whether it, again, whether it's zombies or whether it's aliens or whether it's Nazis and like that. You're only I, the idea of getting fatigued with killing a certain enemy type. It doesn't really occur to me. It's what you do with the, that enemy, kind of like that's fair with that f- faction or with that group. The way you justify the way they're being killed, and also we all know at this point that there's a million th- different things that can come under the banner of zombies in a million different ways that that's they true. can work. Yeah, I yeah, mean, that, that's a we've bit all pain. just sat through The Last of Us, HBO's new cycle on our Twitter feeds the last few weeks being inundated with videos. Oh, and, like, it's, it's coming out tonight, isn't it? Or tomorrow? Uh, but at time of, tonight, yeah. time of recording. Uh, it'll be an yeah. interesting one. Uh, see, the um, weird thing about Last of Us, though, to me, is it's it's become about the people, Jamie. It's but that's, not even about that's the exactly, it's, it's it's exactly, about the that's exactly my point. So we make it about the zombies when we're trying to find things to be bored of because the game that's, isn't doing uh, enough to interest us. Like it's, a, it's basically Jamie's like it's a cop Jamie's blown my mind wide open. I, uh, basically, I just right. think that like it's a, it's a cop out thing that we fall back on when we're not sure why we're not vibing with something. Yeah. When as soon as something's good, we completely forget about the fact that it was, that they were zombies. 
Fair, mate, fair. And But you've also, um, you've given me an idea that um, now the game I'm really looking forward to is uh, Nazi Zombies from Space, um, which is what I'll be looking out for. I want alien Nazi zombies in a game soon, and I, I need that, and I want it. Did, did Infinite Warfare have a have a Nazi mode in space? They should have done if they didn't. Like, zero-G uh, Nazis. D- did they have a zero-G... I don't Maybe know. They did. I feel like I don't like recollect it on some level, but my memory of Infinite Warfare is patchy at this stage. <laughs> anyway, I'm sidetracking us. I'm sorry. Yeah, we've got, we got, um, we got no a lot worries. of grads to cover, fellas. Um, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Oof. comes out May 12th. The game that I probably am the most surprised at that you two are not that excited about out of all games. Uh, I am excited it's about it, but it's like super... No, you aren't. Not- Every time we talk about it, you go, oh, why haven't they done more? It looks just <laughs> no. exactly the same, except there are clouds now. You seem super... Uh, I'm, I am excited about it, but it's 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 probably more so than any other game that I've ever been excited about, the one I'm the most apprehensive about at the same time. But I am no, that, but I am excited that's about fair. it. I, it is undoubtedly a day one Um and you're tempering your expectations. Is that what you're doing? More than that, mate. I'm 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 getting ready to have a shit time, but I'm I'm going wow. both, both feet first. I hope Fair. I'm wrong, and and if I'm wrong, fucking great, you know. Um, something that I think will be wicked, but also I'm worried about Suicide Squad: <laughs> Kill the Justice League is yeah. coming out May 26th. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I obviously but, a delayed game, a big delay for that one. Yeah. I, I want this to be a day one game. Like, it feels weird to talk about it when we haven't had that moment in the sort of like preview press media cycle yet where they've just gone like, here's the game. Like, just, just, and just shown us it. That sounded like, like a proper um, beatbox, by the way. <laughs> it they, did. Hey, yeah, you're welcome. Record, record it, loop it, you know, royalty free. You've got my permission. There we go. Um, <laughs> Like, even, like, obviously, I'm not going to, like, when they were at the Game Awards a couple of weeks ago, it was obviously, um, for, for for other reasons, it wasn't yeah. necessarily to promote the game outright. Um, but it does still feel like we're, we're, like, we're due, like, a 15-minute long video of, here's the Suicide Squad, here's Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League being played, here's yeah. all four characters and what makes them unique, here's the way you're going to be playing it, both alone or with friends or however the fuck that works. And also, like, here's the point like here's here's what kind of game it is. Um, yeah, but doesn't that worry and, but, you though that we haven't had that yet? It does to a certain extent, but what doesn't worry me is, um, like uh, I don't. I, I, in a word, rock steady. I guess. Yeah. Like yeah. they don't they don't worry me. Um, they, they don't fuck around. And, I, and maybe I'll live by the sword, die by the sword, in that one. But yeah. <laughs> We'll see. And we'll end up with another Gotham Knights. Uh, Street <laughs> Fighter 6 is coming June 2nd. Cool. Um, and then Diablo 4, oh, June 6th. Buddy, 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 buddy. I, I, I can't wait for this. I, and, and again, I know I'm probably just going to be dis- fucking disappointed, but yeah, I, I can't wait. I, no, I, don't say that. It, it, I'm, see, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful with this because they're, try- they're, they're mixing it up. They're trying something a little bit new, aren't they? And I didn't have a great time with Diablo 3, so I'm hoping that this is going uh, to bring me back into the fold. Diablo 3 was fine. And you'll say, yeah. do it, Jonesy, and I'll try it and I'll love it. Look, the, the thing is that we know, okay, is two, twofold here. Having a Diablo-style game in your life at any given time is nothing but a good thing. Uh, at, and the other point is to say that coming off the back of the reception of Diablo Immortal that you'd think that they'd really be fucking treading carefully with this franchise. Um, so all, hmm. all, all fingers point in the right direction, but, you know, who, who fucking knows? But yeah, I'm just excited to just play some more Diablo, quite frankly. Hell yeah. Can, can we have a big, like, co-op Diablo 4 weekend when that game comes out, please? Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm up for that. Big okay. time. You can I, convince me that it's good while we're playing. Can, can we can we do I like think, I think, like old school lands and just all go, pile over to Jonesy's house and sleep over and you, you know yeah like, that'd be wicked yeah we cool. big time and Jonesy's dad can come round again and continue to not understand what the fuck his son does with his free time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> absolutely uh, all right so finishing out the year for games when we know when they're coming out well you know it should be coming out. Um, Final Fantasy 16 is coming June twenty second and then Baldur's Gate three is going to be dropping. in august yeah it's um, it, it's kind of mad that like cut off right that mid-year cut off because it's all like yeah let's just wait for that summer games fest slash e3 time um before we tell everyone about the rest of the fucking year 
Yeah. Yeah. Before before they actually like have to make any sort of decisions, commit to release dates <laughs> because they're. Uh, it's been weird. It's been weird, guys. Let's put it that yeah. way. Last couple of years, it's been spotty. Yeah. Yeah. Like especially as a PS5 owner, like I know the the big one is was like there's a big one that we're going to talk about in a second. But I am also kind of looking at the year, being like, when are you going to hit me with some of that sweet, you know, first party PlayStation goodness? You know. Yeah. There's, right. Yeah, like I know you've cut some deals along the way, and you've got a big piece of hardware to launch, but like, let's let's let's, let's get cooking, baby. <laughs> to be to be fair though, there is, there is a, a biggie. There is a biggie. There there is a biggie, but I I just don't want there to be one biggie all year. Uh, and we all know that you can't rely on one biggie because that you know, what if it's not as biggie as you think it is? What if he gets killed in a drive by? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so now let's touch on some of the games that we know are coming out, but we don't have confirmed dates for. Um, in Q1, we should be seeing another game, which has been a long time in the making, Kerbal Space Program 2, which has been fraught with development problems. Yeah, I, I thought this thing got cancelled, man. I think it did get cancelled, um, and then it got picked <laughs> up, and then it got brought back, and then, you know, it's been messy. It's been messy. Um, <laughs> but I, for one, am really looking forward to Kerbal Space Program 2. The first one was so much fun. Um, sure. It's funny. Yeah, uh, similarly yeah. to like uh, Jamie saying with um, um, uh, uh, Star Wars, like I hope it's that they sequel the hell out of it. I hope that they sequel the hell out of this. I don't just want to see, you know, a few additional parts of craft. Le- things le- like legitimately, and I'm not trying to take the piss here. How would they sequel the shit out of the first Kerbal Space Program? Like, because I so um, because the first one, I think they they sort of focused on. Um, you can make flying craft, you can make spacecraft, and obviously adding in a kit of things that you could do. I think yeah. they need a ground, like a completely new um, uh, engine for one. Um, yeah, I sure. think they need to add a whole bunch of new textures, but designs, looks, maybe like a completely different mission structure. You can do a lot more exciting stuff. Um, but it's going to fundamentally have to retain, you know, the uh, Kerbal Space Program DNA. So you're going to have to be building the stuff. Yeah. But I think there's ways they can it- iterate on that without sort of ruining it. Who knows? Uh, going into Q2, Forza Motorsport is coming out. Yep, um, cool. And then Hollow Knight Silk Song. Everyone's going to lose their goddamn minds. Well, we're assuming Q2, right? Like We are assuming. Yeah. We, we don't know anything. It was kind of that weird thing where they, they had that big Xbox showcase and they're like, all of the games you're about to see are going to come out in the next six months. And no one thought it would happen, but Hollow Knight Silk Song was on there, but it was one of the few that didn't actually have any dates attached to it. It's just kind of like weird and every, yeah. everyone yeah. kind of forgot about it. And then some people started put, perking up and be like, hold on a second. So this is going to come out in the next six months. And we've seen like one fucking trailer for it in like the past like two years. It's like, yeah, it's fucking. On, on, on Wikipedia, it says, while no release date was announced, Xbox claimed in a tweet that the game would be available within the next 12 months before June 12, 2023. So because they put that branding on it, like everything you yeah. see here is yeah. coming out in the next, like you said, that's it's amazing that that's still all we've got to go on. And day one um, and Games Pass are so like fucking score, big score. It almost makes you feel like it's going to get delayed. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> it does a bit. Undoubtedly. Um, um, but- that, that's going to be sick though, boys, honestly. That, that, that'll be a good one. Again, I might one, have one, the first by then. One to stream. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I'm looking forward to letting other people be excited about something that doesn't excite me because I um, am not a psychopath and I'm capable of empathy. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, also <laughs> coming the psychopath. Q2. Hell yeah. <laughs> also coming Q2, we should see Redfall and Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl. Um, and then it is a biggie. Starfield is supposed to be coming out sometime. <sighs> I hope so. I mean, it's all, it almost has to, right, lads? Like, why? That, why? Why almost has to? Well, because like, I, it's still funny to me that like they were so hard set on that sort of uh, whatever it was, eleven, eleven, twenty-two date yeah. last year that you can still go back to trailers where like there's like the eleven, eleven, twenty-two date appears in the trailer and they can't change it because it's <laughs> it's in the cinematic, it's rendered in, um, <laughs> and so like I think. I'm sure on both the Bethesda side and almost definitely in, on Phil and the Xbox side, there was a reluctance to um, to delay their only big game of uh, of the fall of of the Christmas period. And I think the fact that they sort of like they they buckled and it happened suggests that like well, it does suggest that it was a delay it really needed, 
which maybe means that there is capacity for like it to get pushed along a little bit more. But it also means that like I think it probably was really touch and go as to whether or not it could have come out in December, which makes me hope that it's makes me optimistic that it's just about going to be ready for Q2. And let's not forget Q2 could go right up to like the end of May. And if you told me that Starfield's going to be ready in five months, I'd be like, okay, yeah, like, yeah, in, I could see that. Five months was the exact same time between the announce and the release of Fallout 4. Like, Bethesda Game Studios can do work they can quickly. Do it. Like, yeah. Starfield, yeah, the Starfield build-up has been long-winded and um, and different <laughs> in a lot of ways to I, that game. But Honestly, yeah. I hope this is good. I fucking hope this is good. Like, like I, I hope it's like Sk- Skyrim levels of fucking good because I just need that in my oh, life. I, okay. I need a, a big good non-broken uh, Bethesda game. When I say non-broken Bethesda game, it it's undoubtedly going to be broken, but in which way is acceptable? That's what mm. you've got to ask yourself. The Bethesda I way. See, yeah. I'm going to have to say, and I think I'm batting 100 at the moment for this, I think it's going to get uh, delayed until... Do you know what? I'm going to say November yeah. 11th. Oh, that, yeah, I think that that's probably around the same time that God of War Ragnarok was coming out, according to you as well. So, uh, mm. yeah. Uh, mm. I mean, what are you talking about? I always said God of War Ragnarok will come out. Yeah, you're batting 100. Like, come on. Batting 100. <laughs> I will also <laughs> acknowledge that, like, if Starfield and Hollow Knight and Stalker 2 all make it out in Q2, alongside the slightly more safe bets of Redfall and Forza Motorsport, that's a big three months for Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. Yeah. Big. Huge. Um, do, you, do you reckon they get to the point where like, shit, we should have charged for some of these. <laughs> we would have made a lot more money. <laughs> like, I can't believe we said that shit. Why don't we give these games away? <laughs> God, God damn it. Um, uh, Q3, we've only got one uh, that we're not sure about in Q3 at the moment, and that is Assassin's, or that we're going to mention, which is Assassin's Creed Mirage. Um, yeah. Which I think I saw something in the last few days where they were sort of saying like, Assassin's Creed Mirage is going to be an Assassin's Creed game. Don't get too scared. So um, yeah, because because yeah, Ubisoft's they're, they're, on fire at the moment, so they need a, any good fucking things they can talk mm, about. They do. Yeah. They need it. They need their big their big um, uh, um, franchise to be big because otherwise yeah. they yeah, could be in a lot of trouble. Like this is a game that hasn't been delayed yet because it has yet to ever have a formal release date. But I would I would say with ninety nine point nine percent conviction that if they'd given the first release date they thought they were going to get uh, like like a nail internally this game would have been delayed maybe twice uh, to get because the current rumor is August that's mad um, yeah just as yeah um, but still the idea of like going back to what we said about it last year with all those leaks um, the idea of a stripped back Assassin's Creed game that is like oh we don't need to be a 60 70 hour long RPG anymore sounds great and I hope it works it does sound great but like yeah. th- then again if that if that's pushed to August let's say if that comes out in August and with Skull and Bones not that anyone was fucking excited about that anyway but with that being pushed like wh- what is Ubisoft doing what are they releasing zero nothing until August Avatar also, they won't even tell us, Pandora, but, no, when, when this comes out they won't even tell us they'll do another you know, where they just slide it out and don't tell anyone, don't do any marketing, and they just go, oh, no one bought the game, we didn't tell anyone it was coming out. What a surprise. Nah, that, I mean, that, that has to change. That has they, to change they, they're putting all their fucking eggs into that fucking Assassin's Creed Mirage basket for this year. They have to, because they've got nothing else. Well, they got Avatar, in theory. Yeah. We don't know for sure, but I think they... Like, hey, that... <laughs> If I were looking at the way that film was going about its business, I'd want to get that Avatar game out as soon as fucking possible. Because <laughs> yeah, just like because it's going to be trash anyway. So like, just get it out. Yeah. Let the people who went to see it at the cinema and paid billions just get them to buy it. They're not. They're we need, we need the freaks with their tattoos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we need the tattoo people to buy it. Um, Q4 is uh, going to be a big month for Chris because Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will be coming out. Um, I mean, one of the most. Not the longest delays, but one of the most insane long delays after Final Fantasy VII oh, yeah. remake came out. A- a- abso- Bizarre how long they took to get this out. Absolute smooth brain fucking maneuvers by Square Enix over there. Like, <laughs> mental. <laughs> like, like you know what? They could have taken this long to fucking do it, but you know what they should have done? Is they should have delayed the initial Final Fantasy VII so that there wasn't this long a gap in between them. Like, it's insane to me. Agreed. What they should have had is as soon as you finish um, Final Fantasy VII Remake, it fucking plays the, like, end game cinematic and then it plays a fucking trailer for the next game. And it's like, yeah, coming soon. 
Like that's what they should with, have with done. a. Coming soon would work, but but even like Cloud Strife will return in. <laughs> yes, yeah, but instead it was like just wait a couple of years and then we might release a couple. It. By the time this comes out, it would have been over three. Yeah, no, I, I remember when when Final Fantasy Phew! when Final Fantasy Seven remake like finished up and people were like, okay, it's it's done really well, you know, really critically acclaimed. When's the next one coming out? And the the guys working at the Square Enix, they're like, yeah, we we we're, we're kind of like in pre prod now. And I'm just thinking about like, you, fucking morons. What are you doing? Like it, may, it makes it really back is. to the future two like, and three. This bitch. Like, look, look. At the end of the day, guys. Like the the maximum kind of fucking holds true. Like making games is fucking hard, uh, especially good games. Um, so you know, like, yeah, fine. It, it worked out the way they worked out, but just from a consumer perspective, it made fucking zero sense. I mean. I'm a person who, like, Final Fantasy VII Remake was one of my first Final Fantasy games that I picked up and played from start to finish in earnest. And I didn't hate what I played, but I wasn't, like, over the moon with it either because it was incomplete. And yeah. the thing that would have helped it immediate feel, immediately feel less incomplete has come out so far after the fact that I don't know what to do. Like, do I just watch a YouTube video <laughs> about Final Fantasy Remake to remind myself of the game I played and then go into Rebirth hoping for the best, or... Because I'm definitely not replaying remake, even though oh. there's a PS5 version, and I never played the Yuffy expansion. Yeah, it was like a, it's like a was it like a 45 hour game. Some of yeah, there. I think it could be shorter if you fucking streamlined it. But yeah, yeah. too long to play again, especially because I thought it was like seven out of ten game for me. <laughs> then yeah, um, but then coming after that in Q4 should be one of the most me. anticipated. Yeah, games you can you can say coming year. again. Yeah, that's me. Marvel's Spider Man Two, um, which I know we are all hyped oh. for. Um, I can't wait for that. I think it's going to be uh, fantastic, phenomenal, brilliant, amazing, wicked. Um, yeah, looks great. Yeah, Insomniac continue to prove time and time again that they are the dudes. That first game was a wonderful platform to build on in terms of like. Doubling exactly like sequelifying shit like exactly yeah. like we talked about earlier like double down on what worked cut what didn't um, all for Venom all for Craven if it ends up being Craven like all for Peter and Miles team up like let's fucking go oh yeah oh, definitely, definitely it's gonna be so good I, I can't believe it's Q4 though that's it hurts my soul but what are you gonna do Can I, I think I have an answer for this can I ask you both co-op or no co-op on that one I think they came out saying that there's no co-op no because I, I specific, have they confirmed that? Okay. I specific. Well, I don't know because I specifically remember after that trailer came out, where it did seem like Peter Parker and Miles Morales like tagged co- co- co-op, fucking gang banging some dudes, and I was like, "Oh, fellas, yeah. I can't wait for the co-op." And you were, you guys were the ones saying like, "No, they've confirmed no co-op." So I don't know. I, I don't remember, mm. but yeah, no, yeah, I, sure. I don't. I don't remember. It, maybe I read that and it'll slip my mind. My my guess would, would be no. But I, don't I would know be sure. so sick if it was though. It would be really good, yeah. Like it would be cool, but I, I don't think they'll have co-op. Um, yeah, I'd be, I would be surprised. Yeah. It's just not PlayStation's sort of thing, is it? It's yeah, it, it might, it might just be too, too chaotic to kind of like rein in anyway. Like if, if I'm thinking about like the web slinging and going from like point to point, imagine two people trying to fucking co- like coordinate and everything. It'd be yeah, insane. Mm-hmm. Also, like. Like one of the most overlookable parts about both those uh, games is that like they had great stories and sometimes co-op experiences kind of muddy the story in terms of like who's the lead player and who's making progression and who's not is it like are you both completing that mission and what if you jump into someone else's campaign halfway through are you, like yeah are you gonna redo those missions when you blah 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 easy just to yeah. make a single player game sometimes yeah <laughs> okay, and sure okay. I, I, one one thing it's one thing that Jamie one thing that needs to happen relatively soon. Just to see if it changes the experience, just come with me on this. You're gonna, I know you're gonna poo poo it. You're gonna, you're gonna scrumple your face up and go, "Why do I want to do this?" We should do some co-op Gotham Knights. <laughs> so we what, should. If if we nothing, should. if nothing, I'll tell you what. I will do it on the basis that like it's the platform for some for some kind of piece of content. Whether we like record it and chat at the same time, or play it and then sh- record a conversation afterwards, I know no one really wants to hear Gotham Knights discourse in 2023. Like that was one of the things I'm sure people glad died last year. <laughs> but I do kind of want to argue because wow, that would be so we could we could talk Gotham Knights while we play it. We could have it out and argue about because I didn't I didn't love it. Obviously, it's not a lovable game. Go- I didn't hate it. I didn't think Gotham, it was as bad. Gotham as Knights was played by people was made by people who played Mafia Three and said, "Geez, this is great." <laughs> 
<laughs> but I think, yeah, we. I, I think I think we should uh, have a bit of a chat about it. But hey, okay, okay. We are we're running Actually, low on uh, time. Jonesy, I'll make we'll Jamie say, do that. We'll make like, some content. Sorry, I, I'm down for that. If we consider that like a main mission that you and I have to do. Like that, I will note that down. That's something we have to do in the future. If you just excuse me, though, I do have to leave the belfry to do another night of completely meaningful, repetitive, regurgitated crimes to like for the most like ham-fisted progression system imaginable to come back and do the main story mission because I don't want people to find out that if they smushed all our story missions together and we let them play it back to back, this game's kind of only two to three hours long. <laughs> There's. One thing about the Gotham Knights, I I would love to have been in some of those production meetings where like the realization about how like empty slash shit slash ter- like terribly received that game was going to be, and then be oh, like, yeah. what the fuck are we going to do? And then the just, I think following along the progression of how do we fix this, they definitely had multiple how do we fix this meetings, and I would like to have been a fly on the wall for those. Yeah, but yes, there's a bit of content, Jamie. We will do together. We'll do some. Uh, multiplayer Gotham Knights. Um, yeah. Okay, so there's a few games that we don't know when they're coming out at all. We have no idea. Um, they've not been confirmed, but they're all likely to come out in 2023. So let's uh, rattle through a few of these um, and just pick up any points we want to. So one of the first, um, we'll talk about Armored Core uh, Six Fires of Rubicon is supposed to be coming out, which is a bit of a surprise because it was a FromSoft game, obviously, that we weren't expecting. Yeah. And we only found out about it very recently and it's already coming out. So um yeah, like one to look out for for sure. It's it's, it's going to be interesting. Hey, and my newfound love for FromSoft. <laughs> never know. I, might I, I think it's going to be interesting, but I think it's going to maybe rub a lot of people the wrong way because if they're coming to it looking for like um, a Souls-like perspective, it, it's not going to be that. They've come out saying it's not that. Um, and it is just kind of like customizing your mech and going about, which in its own right sounds fucking cool. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting one for sure. I used to love Mech Warrior, so I'm actually thinking that maybe, hey, maybe I'll enjoy this. I don't know. That trailer is sick, though, man. Um, I'm, I'm going back. Like I think I played Mech Warrior in like the mid '90s, so I'm going back quite a long way. To be fair, but they've changed quite a lot since then. Uh, Stellar Blade will also be dropping this year, as well as The Wolf Among Us Two. Sure. Um, Alan Wake Two, something that I think is pretty highly anticipated by a lot of people as well. Will be dropping. Yeah, like in another version of this sort of like section of the podcast where I thought there was a possibility I might have to choose two or three titles that I was excited about. Like Alan Wake 2 was was probably, in, it was in the mix for me, just purely based on the fact that like, I already like Alan Wake 1 and that universe. Yeah. But I think that couldn't, I think that Control took Remedy to kind of another plane in terms of their ability to mix their sort of, their third person shooter fundamentals that were a little bit lost in the, in the, in the midst of, Alan Wake 1 and certainly in Quantum Break, but like Quantum Control was the perfect marriage of their like bizarro, like Lynchian, Twin Peaksy <laughs> narrative chops and um, and their third person shooter chops. And I hope Alan Wake 2 kind of expands on that um, with maybe a little bit of let, go back to the to Lynchian stuff and maybe not quite go back quite as go back quite as hard to the uh, like Stephen Kingy kind of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. The, 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 basically, there are still red flags that surround Remedy. Like, like everyone will talk very quietly the fact about the fact that those Crossfire X campaigns did come out last year, and they were apparently atrocious. And apparently, even if you just focus on the camp, the the stories, the narratives that they wrote, like they were apparently also really bad. I'm just gonna choose to mute all of that and say, oh man, the team that made, made Control are making another third person yeah. action adventure game of some kind. All, all so, they have to do on. is like a. Alan Wake 2's take on um, Ashtray Maze and then fucking Golden. Bullseye. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, Flashback 2 will be coming out this year, which I am Ooh. super excited about. A game that I played in the 90s. And they're, really <laughs> made, they're making a second one. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, <laughs> some of the some of the graphics and some of what they're doing with that game do look really interesting. So I'm, I'm excited for that. Yeah. Um, Lies of P is one I think we all watched and were like, eh, this is Pinocchio. <laughs> yeah. Like we've never seen him before. Um, but yeah, no, it looks, looks pretty interesting. Look, could be very good. Could, you know, just fall, fall on his ass maybe a bit, but I'm um, something that I think mm. I'm with, again, with my newfound love of from soft, maybe I'll be into this when it comes out. We'll have to, we'll have to see. I love that. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> Uh, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2 is coming out this year, as well as Hades 2. Um, That's a big one. Trailer for very recently. That's a big yeah, one. That's a big one. 
a, a nice surprise and even that. nicer that it's like coming out within seemingly 12 months of its announcement. So, yeah. Yeah. But that's one of those ones where Hades 1 was so good that they don't even need to sequelify Hades yeah. 2 that much. Just like a new player character with new skill set, new gods, new weapons, new biomes or locales or whatever the fuck you want to call them. Like, just a remixed Hades will be enough to hold my entertainment for another 20, 30 hours. So bring yeah, it exactly. Exactly. Um, and then the last one I'm going to mention coming out is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, which I've already said Ubisoft need to pull their fingers out of their asses and they need to get that out the door in the next month. So Listen, um, stick a date on it. If it's if it's not you know. Wii board compatible, I don't want to know about it. Mm, I think <laughs> we might be in for a long year, Chris. <laughs> oh man, it's, um, it's it, that, that's going to be big wank. I'll tell you that much right now. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to. It's going to be as good as Hogwarts Legacy. So what oh, well, they're both well, both be... both movie properties. So sure, why not? Easy With a hundred percent less turfs, <laughs> maybe. Right, right. Twitter. <laughs> um, hey, that is the end of our list of games that are coming out in twenty twenty three. Um, that is all from me, all from Chris, and all for Jamie. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me um, to talk about the games this week. Um, and then the only thing I've got left to say is you can reach out to us at Super Show Pod on YouTube and Twitter. Um, you can catch us on YouTube to watch the podcast live. Not live. What do I mean? In video form. That's what there you I mean. go. Um, <laughs> and you can also catch us on podcasting platforms. We're talking Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts. So, uh, hey, check us out in one of those many ways. And maybe sign up to our Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash Super Show. Nice. Um, and with that, guys, I'm going to say goodnight. Bye. See ya. Bye. See you later.